You guys' favorite workout equipment. The seated tib raise machine. Thoughts on a seven day split. The, the idea is a seven day split to try to mitigate stress of missing a day. Just don't go with the old school mentality of like Monday's chest day. The next day is chest day, yeah. not Monday. So what's some essential items always in your gym bag? Your gym bag is like the, uh, what's that? The Harry Potter, the Hermione thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like an endless yeah. bag of fucking, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you fit it all in there, but whatever. Thoughts on training without a specific goal? Do you uh, know the quote from Big Roy after he benched 900 pounds at super training? He said, I have no goals. <laughs> I was like, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life <laughs> how do you structure your training and recovery days for me i don't i don't really structure anything i don't feel pressure that i have to work out well that's what the uh the english people do they 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 pronounce they pronounce things with lots of but then they stick an r on shit that doesn't have an r at the end yeah utah <laughs> in seamer alaska <laughs> <laughs> no they will put an r after no uh, maybe Nerd. that's the way you get out of not being yeah. able to pronounce things. Like I can't say last name. Like, <laughs> you just and Seamer. And Seamer. <laughs> and Seamer. <laughs> You're like you just go that ahead. That sounds and, so like hillbilly. We should we should uh, get this look, thing. Rolling. Yeah, I'm recording, so you guys want to go live? It's like yeah, 10% right, wrong. Just making sure. Yeah. All right, let's go do live. this. this we're, is... we're going live. In uh, there's yeah, no timer. I wish there was. Da, 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 da. Why is Graham here? You guys trying to pull a fast one? And he's got notes. Oh, read from page forty three. <laughs> wait up, wait up. You I, said, I uh, do page four. Do Dutch what, cat. What'd you call Johnny Sins over here? First Johnny off, Sins. don't use my stage name in public. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, name. <laughs> before we started, you were saying like how you have humongous testicles. Okay. Mm. I do have large testicles. <laughs> so but give, give me a, like a hand, like, it, like, like how, how large, like, like <laughs> compared to that kettlebell right there, that kettlebell Bill way, Meyer way gave a, us. Way as much. Um, no, so when I met Tiana, she saw me in the workout shorts ago. She's just like, I thought you were fucking joked. Or like, whatever you call that. Like, you just, you, was, well endowed. She, she's just like, I was kind of worried. I thought you were really well endowed. And then I was like, realized it was all testicles. I'm like, hmm. So, You're so like, welcome? I don't yeah, know which way to take that one. You. Yeah. Compared to that kettlebell, what are we talking, bro? Well, the left one's bigger than the right one. See, I've got right. Is got, one of your testicles as big as that kettlebell? Yeah. Yeah, it's just or a, bigger. No, well, it's it's like it depends on the day. People probably think we Dude. have a real kettlebell in the <laughs> studio <laughs> That's here. True. Well, this yeah. is, how it's is this a, not a, a real kettlebell? One pounder. It's, it's a one pound paperweight though. You could swing it's that real. shit. It's not fake. You're right. Have you gotten them checked to make sure you're healthy? I've got. Well, I asked Mark when he went down to talk to the uh, the penis person, mm -hmm. and he didn't ask my question, which was I, I have what would be considered a vesicule, which is like there's so one one of the veins that or arteries or whatever which way it flows brings blood to the left testicle is like either blocked or swollen to it just like it, you have like a lot of extra blood vessels in there too so that adds to the equation too mm -hmm. whoa but it, it depends on the day sometimes if you know like it just goes up and down the hot or the cold yeah the hot yeah. it goes then you yeah. happen to use your cold plunge so the funny thing i, I sleep <laughs> in the nude um and so As do the only thing tiana sees in the morning is i get out of cold <laughs> plunge and she's like i think 90 percent of her experience is like got a tiny penis. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's shrinking. It happens to all of us. <laughs> got to wait until you're with her for a little longer. I think, I think you frightened her. I did. But that's why I proposed because then she's stuck. Well, locked, oh, locked yeah. Locked in. Congrats. Stuck with me. Paper trail, right? Make yeah. her locked in. Yeah. 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 How'd you get on the podcast? Dude? What happened? <laughs> I, I walked in the room. This is the thing you guys don't realize. It's like, I know where the room is. Sometimes I just walk in here and no one's told me to leave yet. No. <laughs> it's been great. And then boom, you're here. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Hey, uh, Graham, some guy named Patrick Grope said, I love the Barefoot Sprinter. He's the reason I have an eight sleep. Thanks for recommendation, oh. man. Absolute game changer. Well, he didn't use my referral code because <laughs> you didn't get that fucking <laughs> You didn't get that money, did you? I know. I, I <laughs> think um, that's, I think, but that's awesome because I, so speaking of that, I've been looking at uh, the app, um, whatever, you know, like eight sleep has, app. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. I just started looking the last few days. I'm like, this is really good because I felt really good on Monday. And then I happened to look at the app. I'm like, well, no wonder. You're making mm. some progress over there? Uh, well, like I, I noticed like if I sleep well, mm. the numbers, the HRV and like what is the heart rate's lower and HRV is higher and stuff. And I was like, wow, this is actually really accurate. Mm. And I was like, this, this is cool. I guess I, well, I don't want to get in the, tra the, the trap of, oh, my, my thing says I'm. You know, mm -hmm. low, but it's generally pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big fan of the eight sleep. And Tima told me to turn the temperature down. That's been, I've been doing this thing at night called Luften. It's like um, an Austrian thing. That's it's like where on. you fart underneath the sheets and then you <laughs> that's cover a, it over that's, your... a, that's a Dutch thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what, what the fuck's Lüften? <laughs> Apparently, it's uh, it's over there in Austria, but they uh, they open the doors and windows at night oh, right yes. before they go to bed, and so like all oh, a bunch of cold air comes um, in, and it's like that's been a game changer because it's like. Hmm. Take about 10 minutes before we go to bed, open up all the doors, and I run around going, Luften, Luften. My room's always freezing. It's like 60 degrees. <laughs> that's crazy. Can hang, some, yeah. hang some meat in there. Yeah. Yeah. I want to let, okay, everyone that's here right now, we got 42 people in here. First off, we'll be answering your questions. So if you're in the live chat, you can ask your questions there. I'll write them down. I'll get them. We'll answer your questions. At the end, we'll be getting out some good stuff from Vivo Barefoot, mm. Within You Supplements. We got something called the Hunkering Stool, which we'll show you guys, but we'll give away two of those. Ooh. Yo, we got a, a super bunch of chat. Good stuff. Oh, we got a super we chat. We got oh, a super hey. chat. And if you do give a super chat, we'll answer those faster than we answer everything else. So we'll get to you, Gunpowder Tea Guy. And then real quick, Graham, if you could just pull the microphone a little bit closer to you. Just, yeah, yeah you can pull the whole base. There you go. It's coming in hot now. There you but, go. See, but, told you. Also, if you're Thank here, you. hit the like there because that like will help the live get some more people. And it'd be cool if we can get like more than 120 people in here today at one time. The last live we had like 111 mm. peak. So 120 would be a good goal. Yeah, let's do it. And we're here today with the Barefoot Sprinter. So mm -hmm. if you got questions specifically for him, give us a little bit of background while we wait for, for more questions to be mm, flowing yes. in. Give us a little background on the barefootness. Well, I don't have a foot fetish, but I'm interested in feet. So that's that's a start. Uh, I've been. You were a, in a lot of pain at some point, right? Yeah. So I've been a coach for is ten ish years, and that was kind of like a cover story for trying to work on my own body in a sense. And so I had a lot of injuries, uh, ankle sprain, patellar tendonitis, disc issues in my back, shoulder dislocations, and kind of, you know, it was one of those things where I was never endowed with much athleticism, um, but whatever little I had, I didn't know how to train, so I kept getting hurt all the time, and that made it worse. And so then I was a neurotic case of being all worried and afraid of everything. And so, what kind of athlete were you? Because you did do some running. Depending on how you classify it, a mid to long distance runner, if you want to call that, I, I go back and forth on the idea of like athleticism and running in terms of distance, because it's like whenever you have one thing you do. But I ran track and cross country, mid long distance, and so I wanted to do the speed work and like the run with the sprinters and because i'd see their work out they'd show up and look all cool and do a few sprints and go home and i'm like uh -huh. we have to go run. Mm -hmm. we had like 40 minutes we were just running around so but i kind of worked my way down to the four by 400 was the um the pinnacle but then i rode crew in college so a lot of suffering a lot of suffering mm -hmm. in, in uh high school and college and then yeah so i had a background in running which is cool to see you do it and be excited about it because it got kind of boring for me <laughs> i was like oh you're running but um yeah so i've kind of circle back to that uh, uh, you know took a few years of I, I don't know I I was always I was never big enough or like I mean, you see guys that are six I, I grew into my body later so when I was younger I was kind of like awkward and uncoordinated and so I tried out for the football team but it, it, I, I didn't you know like I never had any of the contact sports or team sports take off and so I just kind of ran uh, but you don't really develop a lot of athleticism with that path and then over the the course of college, I started to learn a lot said, but you never grew into your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but I figured out how to lift now. You know, so that's the thing. You know what? My here's a, here's a little. <laughs> Nice that job, Wyatt really Films. Good. Tell Wyatt he should go. Wyatt. Tell Wyatt he should go get a job and make some money. But I will say, my nickname in high school was Twin Peaks because my nipples were big for my body, <laughs> so I would. I think it always seemed like great. You got big nipples too. Yeah, so like I would get. <laughs> the story would, keeps getting better. <laughs> There were, there were people, and they would just love to give me a titty twister. They would walk by. I sweat. <laughs> <laughs> a titty twister. Yeah, and the worst is, you know, it gets cold, and, I, you know, you're running, and they're like, oh, Twin Peaks, oh, and then they just run by, like, a little titty twister. There was a guy who was a year older than me. His name was Sam. Oh, my God. Uh, he just would torture me, just constantly. Did like, you get shamed uh, for having a huge package? <laughs> there were guys that at the time they were like, "Look, you you're hung like a horse," and I'm like, "It's all it's all testicle." I didn't know. <laughs> at the Telling time, all the girls trying to make it sound like it's gross, and they're like, "This sounds intriguing." Well, at the yeah. time right. I, I was watching porn, and so I was like, well, I'm, "I'm not I'm pretty average," you know. It's like, and then then it was like you grow up, you're like, "Oh, okay, okay." Before this goes too much, we got a lot of questions rolled, and we should get to some of these. Um, but somebody said, "Let me let me look real quick." <laughs> Uh, someone said that they'd use your ready to run program to totally get back to soccer. Oh, oh yeah. So Amanda Sereno mm. did Graham's ready to run program. Help me get back into playing soccer full time. Would highly recommend it a hundred percent. Thank you, Amanda. Or thank you. I got to ask you one more question. Make it quick. 
because we got a lot of people. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a hard thing for this man to do. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> you said it was a cover story. Do you mean that it was a cover story so you could help other people, so you could distract yourself away from working on what you really need to work on, which was yourself? You know, I think I would learn by teaching other people stuff. And in some capacity, it was like affording my ability to wear stretchy pants and be in the gym. So it's like, you know, I think a lot of times in life, you don't really know exactly what you're working towards, but you're kind of backing into things. And so I would like, I'm like, I knew I want to be here and I knew I want to work on this stuff, but like, I kind of don't know it. So like, we kind of avoidantly pay attention to other people and then like try to fix other people's problems as a way of fixing ourselves. So I think that's very accurate. Got it. All right, first question from Gunpowder T, please. Let me write your name down. Hey. Y'all, this was the super chat for two bucks. Thank you, homie. You guys' favorite workout equipment. What would you guys say? What's your favorite workout equipment? You know, I'll say recently, the seated tib raise machine. I have that is mm. that is a surprise because we had a Brian uh, Power Three Plus come out that I was a three and a one body, <laughs> and he goes, you know, he, like I couldn't put my toes up, and I was like, okay. But then they brought that. It's just it's super easy. You sit there, and I've just been doing. Dozens of reps every day. The sore next one. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like it's only, well, it's only it's only a thousand dollars, but it does one thing. So, I, I've been I've been that and a, a sandbag. Do you like the single leg tip compared to that one? I personally like the single leg one since you can kind of go in circles. And I shit. think that's probably smarter. Uh, I think what I realized is I have like a severe severe deficit on my left side where like it was just I would, mm. I need to do like five pounds. Yeah, like I, I put the I started with a two and a half pound. Actually I started with no weight just to just to like get that connected because I think after my ankle sprain that was one thing I never really turned back on. I, things you find out years later. And if you guys don't have a thousand dollars, Home Gym Guys yeah. has multiple single leg tip bars um where you can like put some weight on it and you can do it with a single leg. So mm -hmm. have you guys seen this one? Uh hopefully it loads up quick. Come on. Oh fuck your pop up. We got another super chat. But, but this Ooh. one's dope. So it's basically the same thing, mm -hmm. but it's just like a one sided one. Oh, hmm. uh, I again don't know quality wise, but it's pretty cool because you can put one leg at a time. So, yeah. pretty awesome. Way more affordable. But well, if you wait six more months, Mark Bell Slingshot will have it done. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> oh shit! Go. Really? Y'all are making a tip? <laughs> no, I'm just no. kidding. Like, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was like, "No, shut up." <laughs> Mark, what's your favorite piece of equipment? Uh, I love a lot of equipment. I think equipment is amazing because it uh, reduces the amount of like time you got to warm up and stuff like that. But. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty simple. I like leg extensions, leg curls, hack squats. You've been doing the ball. Like back machine. give you like a, and, a firm medicine ball. You've been really messing with that. Yeah. A, lot, love, a million things. Yeah. I love I love a good like variety. Um, I would say like one of the best pieces of equipment I think that we have in our gym. We have two that are kind of like underutilized, but we have the single leg leg curl that's uh, mm. from Atlantis. That thing's amazing. Um, but that's like super specific, you know what I mean? I and cramped then, up like nothing else last yeah. week. I, did, I, I had to like get did off and walk of it out. I'm just like 10, it hits you in a, mm -hmm. in a weird way. And then we also have that Sornax like back attack thing, which mm. is amazing, but sometimes just annoying to like set up mm. and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's very expensive, but the free motion dual cable machine, because you can do any muscle group very, very well, very like intense or not intense, hypertrophy, you can get strength, strong on it, whatever you, whatever you want to do and literally every, your entire body on one machine. So that's by far my favorite machine. It's the one I have in my garage. How much do those cost? Uh, they're like five grand now. Mm. Yeah. They, that's not awful. For, I mean, ev for, for me, for yeah. everything I need and will ever need with the exception of like a sled or something like that. But that's what I use. Yeah. I think power systems makes that one that we saw, um, we saw at the University of Texas, that one that you can just run like for as long oh, as you want. Big yeah. old cable machine. Yeah. Yeah. That one's that's pretty too. neat. And I would mm -hmm. imagine that's probably not crazy price wise mm -hmm. either. No. Yeah, I can't answer this question well. Like I love the cable machines, but like if I at home I have uh those base bar uh bars we could do dips and pull ups on. I have mm -hmm. uh some kettlebells at home. I have a slant board. Um and I can get some pretty mean workouts with a lot of that stuff. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's Any favorites when you were bodybuilding? When I was bodybuilding? Shit, I, that's the thing on favorites. Um, I use the use Smith machine them, yeah. quite a bit. Mm. Really? I'd do, yeah, I'd, I'd be doing like a Smith machine squats. Smith Because like it's very controlled range of motion. You can really dial in on your pecs, which you're doing benching, or on mm. your legs if you're trying to just focus straight on your quads. The Smith machine's fucking beautiful if you're focusing mm. on bodybuilding. But 
people, for some reason, they think like the smooth is for pussies. Ah, not if you're a bodybuilder. See, but I'm using that thing all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not mm-hmm. if you're a bodybuilder. Uh, got another. We got oh, fuck. We got two more super chats. Okay, Let's guys. Go. By the way, we got to get the super chats first, and then we'll be able to get to everybody else. But we'll try to get your questions. Graham should get some of that money. I think. It's only yeah. fair since he's part of the show. For sure, yeah, for I'll sure. $11. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I first want to say uh, Anabolic Activities gave us a whole $2 and they said, follow AA if you're bored of these old guys yapping. Do you guys want to continue to have a show? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> 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 I'll fuck with you. Sorry, I'll fuck with sorry you. dad. <laughs> 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 Dude, I can't believe how serious you can look and just like boom. Like, holy fuck. Okay, let's get to the next super chat. I love you, Wyatt. Uh happy holidays, it fellas. Might be Kenny. <laughs> it's Wyatt. It's Wyatt. It's definitely Wyatt. Uh have slash would you guys ever use Bulgarian style training? An example, practicing one movement like a deadlift slash squat on a daily basis. I've done it before. I'll say that I did it for I a squat every day thing for mm. four or oh. five months. And yeah. yeah, because I didn't know how to squat and keep tension, I got some pretty nasty patellar tendonitis from it. And I don't mm. think that's from the training method or the, the movement. I think it's, I realized at the end, it's like I had no tension. I just, I didn't know what to do. So I'd say if you're going to do it, then make it an art and realize that you play with uh, intensity. So like you're doing the same movement, but. You know, is a squat at twenty percent the same as a squat is a hundred percent? You could arguably say it's a different movement. Mm-hmm. So, like, could you possibly? You know, did you switch up and do like front squats or you know? I, yeah, like I would do. Yeah. You know, it was front squat, but it was more like Olympic lifting focus. But yeah, I would do go back and forth between those. Why the head bobble in there? <laughs> Olympic lifting, like, is it uppity? <laughs> Olympic lifting? Is no, like, because I, <laughs> I, I struggle. <laughs> I did Olympic lifting as much as I did bodybuilding or powerlifting, which is I did it for you know a year ish and got decently. I, I bought a handful of products that supported it. Got some calluses and but you know like you I could do people. a clean with three hundred pounds. Uh, the, I could do a Henkley with three fifteen. That was my. There you go. That's, that's some weight. But I know people that can snatch that. So that's kind of like, eh, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. would I ever say I did powerlifting? It's like, no, yeah. I got a little fat and kind of squatted one time. It's a, but, like, that's not like a, I, you know, like, this there. Like, do I, I, you know, I'll never be able to say I did jujitsu because I'm looking at that guy. You know, it's like I'm 10 years into this thing and I'm still a <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> All right. It, what, do, what do you think about this? Uh, I think it makes some sense to try to get good at something i uh, practice it often i kind of like these like declarations i think they can be useful sometimes um but i always just kind of think of and then what you know that, that's mm-hmm. what i always kind of wonder like where is it going to lead you where are you going to end up is it going to be something that's going to be real productive you want to do it for a month because you think you want to get more proficient at it that's cool but there's also really no rush so you could you could probably make the same amount of progress by doing it three or four times a week it is hard to like toggle the intensity. And I think that for most young people, if they're going to squat every day or try to movement every day, they're probably going to overdo it. Mm-hmm. So that's where you'd be better off just spreading it out a little bit. You know, I know technically the it's not Bulgarian training, but the, the idea of the microdose that we always talk about, I think mm. is really beneficial here because like whether it's doing some form of squatting, whether it's doing some form of deadlifting or whatever, you have some days where it's like, something very light, but still a deadlift. You have some days where it's like heavier, high intensity deadlifts Mm -hmm. and you're not killing yourself every single day of the week. That can allow yourself to get really good at a lot of things really quickly. You know, like jump roping is something that I microdose all the time, but there was a point where I was like microdosing Nordics. So Mm -hmm. I, and I still do that. I still do a little bit, some Nordic hamstring curls every day. Some days it's multiple sets of Nordics, some days it's just only five reps of Nordics or three reps of Nordics, but I get that stimulus every single day and it allows me, I don't know, it just makes all this stuff really easy. So I know it's not Bulgarian training, mm-hmm. but I think the idea is there. Mm. I think you can get a lot out of a little, especially if you are trying to do something uh, often. Mm-hmm. Um, I did two, I guess I did probably like five sets of sled today, but I did two main sets where I just loaded the weight up basically as heavy as I could sort of tolerate and did two sets. So I think a lot of times people are kind of attached to the idea of like, I need 10 sets of this or 12 sets of this for hypertrophy and I need six or eight sets of it for strength. And if I don't get anywhere near either one of those, then it's a a workout that's worthless and that's not true. All right. Pat Project family, we love beef on this podcast. We talk about it a lot. All right. We love our meat. 
But sometimes eating the same meat all the time can get a little bit boring. That's why we partner with Good Life Proteins, which also has certified Piedmontese on their website. But sometimes you might just want to eat some chicken or fish or duck. <laughs> duck? Who eats duck? But you can eat duck. That's why if you go to goodlifeproteins.com, you can select their Build-A-Box options and input all the proteins you want. Then you'll select subscribe and save to save money on all of your meat. If you enter code power project at checkout, you can save up to 25% on your subscription. That means you're going to be saving 25% on all of that different meat that's going to be heading to your door. Once again, head to goodlifeproteins.com. You can enter code power project and save up to 25%. Links are in the description box below, as well as the podcast show notes. Another super chat from Drew. Eric Hart. Also, guys, 60 people here. Click the thumbs up button on the YouTube, please, if you can. Um, just click that real quick, and uh, we'll keep getting to your questions. But Drew Eric Hart, thoughts on a seven-day split, upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, full, full, where if a day or two is missed, there's no stress due to the other days filling in? Sounds good to me. Like, mm. I don't see any problems there. What, what, what do you guys think? I'm not big into scheduling much. I just kind of go, what about you? You you plan some stuff out pretty good. Mm, yeah, because that's kind of like saying, what do you think about, you know, driving 12 miles a day? It's like, <laughs> well, where are you going? You know, it's kind of mm-hmm. like that's that's asking like the process. It's like, yeah, process is, is part of it. Yeah, I think people set process goals, but you, at some level having a direction you want to move in. So what's his, you know, I, I think uh, there's two ways you could look at that. It's like figure out what you want, but um I'm pretty sure, like, since the type of split, it looks like it's a bodybuilding split. So he's trying to get built. He's trying to get bigger. Yeah. And then I go, I I think that's valuable. Um, You know, the the question would be, I think we've been talking about this a bit recently, is, like, if you have to do, you know, can you, maybe maybe the real win is doing, getting more with less, in a sense, is, like, Mm -hmm. maybe there's a lack of connection. Maybe you, what if you did four times a week and train twice as hard, you know, with more more intensity? Or, you know, I think there's something to be said for that, too, because I... You know, the question is like, there's optimal and then there's just, are you scratching your own itch for, I need something to do every day? Because the best training program is the one you're not doing in, in some capacity. And so, you know, that that would be my thought is like, you know, if you're missing, and the other question is how often are you missing it? Because like, if I miss a day or two, it's like, was that every week? Is that every other week? Because that probably just means you're, you know, unrealistic in terms of what you can do. But having a revolving thing of like, this is the next day and I'll do it when I get back to things, you know, might be valuable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I believe that most people get in two or three good training sessions a week. Mm-hmm. And like, if you really, if you just kind of think about that and you're conscious of that, how do you allow yourself to have good accuracy? Um, is it possible to have a good workout every day? I would say yes, for sure. Like if, if you um, are maybe thoughtful about it, if you do what we're talking about, microdosing, um, if you have less expect- less expectations of what it is that you're doing. But I think for the most part, people, especially like someone who's bodybuilding, they want to go in the gym. They want to be there for about an hour to 90 minutes and they want to like kind of tear the place up. You know, they want to end up with a lot of good sets, a lot of good reps. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that level of intensity doing that week in and week out, you're most likely going to be able to muster up three pretty good days Mm -hmm. and maybe one or two other days that aren't great. And I think you want to try to limit those other days that aren't great because you want to try to maximize the days that you have that are awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's kind of my opinion on that. I'll yeah. say this, especially when I was focused on purely building muscle and when I was focused on <laughs> bodybuilding and competing in bodybuilding, my split was something similar to the effect of like I did have, I was doing some sort of training seven days. Um, maybe there would be one day where I wouldn't be in the gym, but there would be five of those training sessions where I would be able to push. Because again, the only thing I was focused on was bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the, all, where I was getting all my training volume. The only other thing I was doing was walking. I wasn't really doing much else. Um, and if that's your goal, you can do that every day. Because like the other sm- the other days in the gym, if you choose to go and it's like an easier training session, that blood flow that you're getting to those muscle groups is going to help mm-hmm. absolutely with your recovery. Somewhat more than just sitting down at home and doing nothing. Although that is good to do too sometimes. I'm not saying you're lazy if you sit out at home. But this is where, again, it's like if your focus is building as much muscle, much muscle as possible in a specific period of time and you're not doing much else that's taking away from that, you can spend a good amount. Of, you can have 
a seven day training split where a few mm -hmm. days are easier, but those easier blood flow type of pump sessions are going to help you recover for your harder sessions during the week. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Klokov said this, Dmitry Klokov is talking about bar hunger. It's like you want to mm -hmm. take a day or two off because like it lets you, you get excited to get back in. I think mm -hmm. that that's huge. There's something about that too. Like if I have a day off, even if you don't want to, it you come back and you just, you're just excited to do it again. I think there's something to be said for that. Yeah. I'll just kind of add to this a little bit too is, uh, it also depends on how long we're talking about doing something for. So if you're doing it for a few months, then that's probably going to work out just mm -hmm. fine. But if you're trying to maintain working out, you know, seven days a week uh, for months on end with a high intensity and high expectations, it's probably going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I was just quickly want to say like, if it's the, the idea is a seven day split to try to mitigate stress of missing a day, just don't go with the old school mentality of like Monday's chest day. And then, like, something happens and you miss, oh, I miss chest day. Like, no, just the next day is chest day, yeah. not Monday. So whatever that day that is, that just happens to be the day. Dude, that is, okay, what Andrew <laughs> said right there is such an important thing because for some reason, we only think about our training blocks in the span of seven days. Mm -hmm. This is something, especially if you're a multi-sport athlete, it's a good idea to, like, you can write out a five- or six-day training split, but that five- or six-day training split can take place over the next two weeks. Mm. They don't need to take place yeah. within a seven day period. Mm. So exactly what he said, like your Monday doesn't have to be chest day every fucking Monday. It could end up being another type of day if you had to, But whatever. Monday's international bench day. Yeah, right, it yeah. is, but. And, and if mean, you're writing out programs for yourself, think about this too. Think about, again, you can program things in a seven day period because if you have a really uh, you know rigid schedule and certain things on certain days where you can only fit in your gym sessions on certain times, okay, cool. But if you can maybe think about, okay, and for the 10 day period, this is what my program is going to look like, or this is what my workout looks like every 10 days. Mm. That'll give you a lot of freedom in terms of your programming. So just if you do that, that can open up a lot of stuff. We got two more super chats. Oh. Oh okay. So for everyone asking questions, again, we will get to your questions, but we got to get to the super chats first. That's just, that's just, that's just what it is. So we got a $5 super chat. Capitalism. A $2 super chat and a $50 super chat. Good God. We're going to start with this $5 super chat from JP503. <laughs> JP503, again, thank you guys. We really this appreciate incredible. it. Incredible. Suggestions on eating windows for carnivore month while strength training. Can we get a peach or a vanilla hydration flavor also, Mark? Oh. Okay. <laughs> JP. I'll write it down. Peach vanilla would vanilla. be interesting. I can peach, say peach and vanilla. Hmm. Yeah. Peach or vanilla. But a peach vanilla might be <laughs> fucking good, right? Peach vanilla. Vanilla peach? Cream. Mm -hmm. Peach vanilla. You like that cream? vanilla peach? Don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> suggestions on eating windows for carnivore month <laughs> while strength training. I just think of one in the same. <laughs> I think sometimes if you're if you're like kind of going on a keto or low carb diet, um, eating around your training can just feel disgusting. Yeah. It can feel kind of weird. Yeah. You know, eating like eggs and meat before you go train. Unless you are allow eggs, in, are eggs allowed in Carnival Month? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. Animal products, basically. Uh, um, yeah, I would say like I don't think it matters that much um, that the timing of things. I just, I guess, I can just share what I do. Like normally, a lot of times before or after a workout, um, I will have um, a steak shake. That's what I usually do, and uh, sometimes before a run, I'll have a steak shake with some coffee. Uh, I'll throw some creatine in there. And I just call it the super smelly shake. I make that most mornings and I just throw some ice in there. So it's an iced coffee. Um, but in terms of like other food, I just don't think it matters that much. I know everyone wants to get like real precise with the mm -hmm. timing and stuff. But uh, if you're going to throw some carbs in there for World Carnivore Month, because I know some people are doing it a little differently, then that just makes everything a little bit different. So if you are allowing for some fruit or a little bit of potato or something like that, things like that before and after workouts could be really useful. Mm. By the way, do you think, because again, like uh, I eat fruit all the time, but do you think for people that are doing World Carnivore Month, it is called World Carnivore Month, can they just allow themselves to eat some fruit or should they try to stick to the carnivore of Carnivore Month? You know, I think you just end up with some different people that have different uh, like mentalities. You know, some people mm. really need that. People really need that, like, I'm showing up at jujitsu at 6 a.m. every day yeah. kind of attitude. Yeah. Uh, even though that might not be the most productive thing, um, some people just sometimes they need that. And same with diet. Sometimes people need to adhere to something real strict. Um, I would say that uh, do it whatever way you can and try to do it to the best of your ability. So, again, I think accuracy is critical. So if you're going to try to do something for 31 days um, – 
how about you be like pretty compliant with it? Like rather than trying carnivore and then by uh, January 13th, you're like off of it completely. And now you're starting to gain weight because you just went off the rails. Uh, why not sprinkle in a little bit of fruit, a little bit of vegetable, a little bit of rice, a little bit of potato, but mainly your, for most of your meals, the, the, uh, thing that you're eating the most of is meat and eggs. Yeah. It'd be like I mean, me, 80% straight, you know, there you go. Yeah, Keep it, <laughs> keep it simple. Um, let's go, let's go into that. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. But you, you mainly eat meat, right? Like, uh, yeah, I would, my thought on that is that I think you kind of, if you're, I wouldn't do, do you care more about the result from your diet or the result of your training? And like, I'm not going to sacrifice my training and like what I'm doing from that perspective yeah. just to have some like arbitrary, you know, things say I did that. Like if you're trying to lose weight, maybe there's something or maybe train, change, whatever, like that, that's there, but it's kind of like figure out what you want. I think that's hard. He's got two priorities at once. And I think by default that kind of can't have two top priorities. I think most people yeah. shouldn't even bother to like do world carnivore month, like a hundred percent. Yeah, and if, say it that if you're in a situation where you think that's going to be like a reset to lose weight, then like don't put the pressure on other things because like that's obviously going to be a stressful, a physical and psychological thing for you to just make that commitment in your life. So just walk. Yeah, yeah. So if you feel like eating a fruit on a real carnival month, don't don't trip. Eat your, eat a fucking fruit. Yeah. Um. So all right, two more super chats and then we're into the other questions from Alex Hicks. What's some essential items always in your gym bag? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start, start with this bag. one because your gym bag is like the uh, what's that uh, the Harry Potter the Hermione thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like an endless out. bag yeah. of fucking yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you fit it all in there but whatever um, <laughs> I think you know used to that well yeah. I would say like I'm, I'm spoiled because we get to work out here but like the the, the, the shake strap attachments they're just the, the biggest no brainer of like anything you put in a gym bag because they have the handle and like the, the tricep one and the single one it's like you put that in there, you could take any gym and then turn it into like a very different dynamic experience. I just think that's one of those that like everybody should have. I'm happy you said that because if I, if like I have to go to another gym and there's no shake mm. strap, I'm disappointed. It's, but, but they're so, they fold up. They're like, you can roll them. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Like, why would you not have that? Yeah, that's true. What else? Uh, I think mainly like what I usually pack is just like protein. You know, like I usually have like either jerky or I have uh, six strip. <laughs> well, because like I own a gym, so yeah. like, all, the gym, all the gym equipment is like everywhere. You know, so the only thing I need to like pack in my bag here and there is like I'll fill this up, make sure the cup is dry. Don't be a rookie and have mm. the cup all wet and then dump Ooh. stiff stuff on top of it because then it gets all stuck to the bottom. Yeah. So I usually just have like a scoop or two of protein with me and uh, steak shake. Everything and you need, mm. nothing you don't. And I'll also have some like carnivore crisps. That's what, pretty much it. Mm. One thing I think would be actually a good idea for you guys to grab would be um, ATG Buddies, uh -huh. or you could grab a, an, a, mm -hmm. another one on, there's other stuff on Amazon, but Andrew, if you type in ATG Buddies so they can see what it is, it's a, like literally portable door stops that you can put underneath your feet mm -hmm. uh, at any width. And this will make it kind of, if you like are trying to get into a deeper squat and you don't want to carry around a slant board with you, even though they're portable slant boards are typically heavy. Those ATG buddies underneath your heels are nice. Mm. They can also make regressing certain movements like a split squat or any movements where you just need to, you, you lack ankle dorsiflexion and you, you need a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. Those are dope. That's why I don't really use Olympic lifting shoes for, yeah. for much of anything. Um, they're, they're solid. Those are good. Maybe a band or something. Yeah, so I, I would say a floss band and like Jill Miller's um, yoga tune-up balls. Like, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, you those want, yoga. Like, ooh, yeah, those, are, those are valuable to have. Um, but I think it, like in terms of a very small backpack, things you could throw in there, an RMT rope, some type of rope that you can just mm. ease into movement, like mm. a handful of things that, you know, let's just say you're only going to be able to hack a gem space so much and like, you know, whatever. But you, you can bring a few things that kind of let you onboard and offboard quickly. So just a, a ball and the floss band if you want to do some mobility stuff, a rope if you want to just get some light movement that's not going to cause too much difficulty, a shake strap handle if you want to transform all the cables, uh, the ATG buddies if you want to you know, adjust them positional leverages. I currently have an iron neck in my gym bag mm. at all times, but that's, uh, it's that's, going a that's little totally bit extra. That's totally normal. <laughs> that's, that's a little that's bit normal. extra. <laughs> I also carry around Aminos too, like uh, uh, the ones Ian was talking about, Ian Danny. Damn. Can you pull um, those bitches up, please? I have oh, some uh, essential yeah. amino acids. Cold. I just a meathead. I'm like, well, I should just take this. So I just 
I don't know. I just bring shit with me. No, but I'm happy you told me about those. The uh, the essential aminos from Ian Danny. Also, I, when he was here, I bought the Neuron. Have but you tried those, it yet? yes, I have. Actually, what's funny is I didn't realize I already had an orange flavor at home. I must have bought it a long time ago when you mentioned it to me once, but hmm. I never used it. But I also had a grape. I, I bought a grape flavor. Um, no comment about that. It is very good though. Okay. <laughs> the green apple is um, even good. I was skeptical. I was like, green apple? I'm like, I don't know yeah, about this. Huh, you were saying, good. yeah, yeah you were saying his stuff tastes weird. And maybe some of his stuff does, but the near off tastes weird. Mm -hmm. The That's near cool. off tastes dusty, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think the near off is uh, one that helps with sleep, right? One that helps with sleep. That one stinks too. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah. The way I look at this shit is that even though it tastes well, he bad, he uses it does... like good dosages, and he mm -hmm. makes stuff that works. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah. So if you're if you're on the live, you have no idea what we're talking about. The episode hasn't come out yet, but that'll mm. be out soon. As far as gym bags, um, the main thing that I like kind of have to have is just the uh, slingshot knee sleeves, um, just okay. because. For whatever reason, like if uh, if I'm doing lunges or if I'm doing any kind of squats or whatever it may be, like throwing on some knee sleeves is going to be the thing that for sure gets me through it. Mm -hmm. um, if I have an elbow thing or a wrist thing, I can just go lighter. But like with lunges, you can't go lighter, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like that's the one thing that's going to potentially prevent me from doing a workout. Then I'll throw those on and I just feel way better. They're also in my jujitsu gym bag. Do you do you keep uh, wipes in your bag? I, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Someone yeah. reminded you me. Know Alex what? Hicks yes. said dude wipes are in my bag, but I also keep wipes everywhere I go, including yeah. my jujitsu bag. My backpack, my jujitsu bag. You, you don't keep wipes I've with you? I've never even thought about this. What? Dude, oh, it's such a good idea, great. right? You're going to keep it. For Dude, what? with that, so wipe your- You keep your butthole really clean. <laughs> Pause. You don't use wet wipes when you take a shit? I have a bidet now. Okay, so, so you're part but, of the wealthy. But when okay. you're. It cost $40. It was like 40 <laughs> <laughs> I remember Tiana ordered it. I'm like, this thing's good. I remember I went to your bathroom at one of your million houses. And I, like, <laughs> I walked in and like the toilet seat sprung up. And I was like, what the fuck? How does it know I'm in here? And I was like, hello, Mark. I'm not Mark, but I can be if you want. <laughs> then it starts <laughs> getting down, a little massage. Huh? And then it sat down like, you're not Mark. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, not get out here. Enough. Yeah, it's but when you're away, <laughs> but when you're away from your bidet, you don't use wipes though? Yeah. Uh, I. You're just I, good at not shitting at other places. I don't. Well, he might just be one of those clean wipers. That's true. Are you like uh, when you he wipe? Is there barely anything? Yeah, you eat a lot of meat and stuff, so it's probably pretty good. I I've never he's even stumbling. About he's this. stumbling I've, hard. I guess because that, I've never thought about it. That means I'm. I don't know. I've never wiped hey, the person. Let's butt. just put it this way: you'll be shocked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll be okay. shocked when he uses the wet wipes. At how much debris is back there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Debris is a Speaking good word food. for it. <laughs> Holy shit, that's an amazing <laughs> word for it. Oh, okay. that's so good. It's like you're rubbing a marker. Yeah. So like this keeps it's just an endless crayon. I will yeah. I'll give it I'll give it a shot. Yeah. But speaking of poops, I listened to Gil's podcast with you all. That has changed. I've just I sit um, in the toilet and I'm a little squatty potty oh, in the yeah. cover and just breathe. just I'm thinking of it every, every time part, I take a shit. He I'm didn't think of, about this. It's not like fun to breathe forward. while you're taking a shit, though, because you're like, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you don't breathe when you take a shit usually? No, I'm saying that the the odor of the, oh. the, uh, oh. the, the is not, you know, nasal breathing is not the most fun when you're like, <laughs> Ooh, I shouldn't have had any in last night, you know, whatever. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys, if you don't know what we're talking about, we did a podcast with Gil Headley. And, listen to um, it. Listen to it. It's very good. But it's important. If you're pushing your poop out, Yo, you're going to be in for some bad shit in a few years. So listen to that. Literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Ah. We got a $50 <laughs> super chat. And this is actually a really good question from Tanner Spaulding, like the basketball. I'm needle lifting and increased volume past three months. I'm working out with a trainer three times per week and on my own other two to three days, I'm starting to feel some elbow tendonitis and wrist pain. Ooh, should I back off or what can be done to avoid making it worse? All right, dude. go for it. Would I would? I'm assuming it's on one thing. Like uh, I don't think you need to back off. You just have to add in certain things. So the the way I kind of uh, address this is that there's you call muscle centric training, which contracts and pulls you in. And assuming you're using the right muscles, let's say you're using your pecs well, then your elbow and wrist can rotate effectively with the shoulder. But one thing I think people don't necessarily include a lot of is you could. You know, it lumps into the soft tissue world, but let's just say like stretching things out, like hanging things that would pull you open and that's going to get the connective tissue. So your muscles exist yes. like the sausage, but then there's the sausage casing. Mm. And so if you do a lot of training, specifically repeated movements, and just say you're a basketball, you're kind of on the same side, same direction, same rotation. Um, when you're in the gym thinking stretching and opening, so you're both getting the contraction of the muscle and then also the stretch and the lengthening. And if you were really stiff or having any issues, then Mark would talk about the soft tissue stuff. But like that lumps into the same like kind of kneading and working on the soft tissue around it. But you don't have to stop what you're doing. You just have to realize that 
you're you're deficient in one vitamin, so to speak. Just now add that in. Gotcha. I think a good way to look at some of this sometimes is like, what is it that you're doing? You know, are you are you bench pressing every week and then your elbow hurts? Because if you are, the simple solution is to not buy a bench. Slingshot. Well, yeah, <laughs> buy, buy a slingshot, <laughs> get some elbow sleeves. Like, there's some things that you can do that might help you manage it better. Uh, but just don't bench press. And, yeah. and don't bench press doesn't mean to take off. You don't have to like not go to the gym because the second that you go back to bench pressing, your elbow is probably still going to hurt. Mm -hmm. But missing a couple sessions, which I know it feels devastating to do, but if you train your upper body like twice a week, if you can pull back uh, for maybe like a month, sounds like forever. Um, again, I'm asking you to pull back, not to not go to the gym and not do the exercise. Um, you're going to want to look into some myofascial release. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to look into some voodoo floss. When it comes to the elbow, especially, it seems like voodoo floss works amazing for that particular joint. Uh, the knee sometimes can be a little trickier, but the elbow seem, you, seems like you get a lot of relief. So you take, uh, I think Kelly Sturette sells these um, voodoo floss bands. You can get them on Rogue. You you wrap around like the forearm or, or the tricep. You usually wrap above or below and not necessarily directly on the spot. And you just move around for a little while and you can do like exercises. You can do like um, mm. tricep push downs and all kinds of stuff. Just try to get a lot of blood into the area. And you leave the wrap on for two, three minutes. You can probably just look up videos on YouTube on how to do it. Uh, but in addition to that, you know, just explore. Like mm. your elbow probably hurts because there's probably some random weird thing in your, like your forearm. Yep. Or there's some random weird thing, uh, you know, between your, your bicep and your tricep that you never even noticed before. So mm. if you start digging around, you get a lacrosse ball in there or you um, go to somebody who does some body work. I think everyone should have someone in their back pocket that's a body worker that they can rely on when they really need them. So if you're in a lot of pain and you don't want to put yourself in more pain, but you don't you don't mind having somebody else put you through the pain, find yourself someone that can do some body work because mm -hmm. they're going to be able to find the spot that you can't quite find. But who the hell knows where this thing is? It could be in your shoulder. It could be in your uh, mm -hmm. bicep. It could be in your tricep. It could be in your forearm. So you'll have to kind of search around for it. But uh, that's what's been uh, help keeping me healthy is uh, doing a lot of myofascial release stuff. On the on the note of exploring too, like when people hear, you know, don't do the, um, uh, they'll hear this idea like, oh, take time off your bench or whatever it is your thing. It's like explore other movements too. Like if your elbow hurts, it's probably because there's some other piece of your movement that's missing. And so you could, for example, if you're basketball, just work on your non-dominant hand handles and just dribble and do, you know, take the time you would have done that thing and then back off the volume. But you don't just like sit around and do nothing, but you can find something else to explore and move within your training, within your skill set, within your overall. There's a lot of stuff to do. This is sick. This is in SEMA doing voodoo flossing seven years ago. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, like, <laughs> yeah, and on a more serious note, I mean, Graham did mention like a slingshot. A slingshot <laughs> will get rid of the pain right away. But we also make, uh, you can go on our website, markbellslingshot.com. We make, um, we make raw sleeves, which are just elbow and knee sleeves that are really easy to get on and off, and they will pull the pain away right away as well. Yeah. So, like Mark mentioned, Voodoo Floss works. But back in the day when I was, like, really doing a lot of, like, uh, volume for elbow flexion and, like, with tricep pushdowns, bench pressing, et cetera, one thing that I was really diligent about because it helped with my help relieve tendonitis once, and I just kept doing it, was, like, wrist rotations with load. So I'd rather I'd grab, like, maybe a mace or something, and then I'd do movements in this direction with the wrist – this direction, this direction. Um, and literally after a few days, my elbow tendonitis kind of went away. And that was something that I kept kind of consistent, especially as I was doing a lot of pressing, a lot of pushdowns. And that could be something that you might want to explore too, along with the smashing and the voodoo and everything that was mentioned here, maybe lowering a little bit about that volume and something you probably might want to try. And uh, Mark has mentioned this before, but like if you've ever seen guys like Ronnie Coleman lift, you'll see a lot of times that they do partials. For example, when they do mm -hmm. tricep press downs, they don't press all the way down. They kind of keep tension on the muscle and they'll keep pressing in a certain area. But one of the reasons why they do that is because when you press all the way down for every single one of those reps, it's a lot of elbow flexion over and over and over. Whereas if you press down and you just keep tension on the muscle while doing tricep pushdowns and you just work within that range, you won't feel as much tension on the elbow along with getting a good amount of volume to the tricep of which you're working. So if you're a bodybuilder, that's something to keep in mind. 
It's good to do long range movements, don't get me wrong, but sometimes, especially if you're just focusing on volume, partials can save your joints. For the nerds out there, that's called strength aerobics and it's by Vershansky and you can look it up in Science and Practice of Strength Training. Mm. It's actually really cool stuff. It will it will literally heal you if you do really, really slow reps with about 40% of your max um, in any area that you're hurting in. Would you be able that to do works it? great. Like I know like voodoo flossing does this too, but like just straight up occlusion training for something like that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So where would you idea. put the, the band then? If you were doing occlusion training on <clears throat> your tricep, you would probably put the band a little bit, I think actually right here, you'd put it above your bicep um, here right there mm -hmm. and then you could do occlusion that way um if you're doing occlusion for your quads you'd put it right above your knee and you'd occlude there um those would be the main actually above your quad and then right underneath like up here right underneath like your groin area you could occlude there too so that would be good to do Dope. Yeah. yeah occlusion and uh the voodoo flossing type stuff it like tacks the muscle down and as you're moving um, you're basically getting a somewhat of a, of a massage as you're going through the movements. Correct myself. I haven't done occlusion in a long time. If you occlude the bicep, you're going to occlude right here. So you're going to occlude right here at the shoulder, right, like not at the shoulder, but right underneath the shoulder. That's where you're going to wrap. That's where you're going to occlude. If you're going to occlude the quads, you occlude here, right up high. Up high. That's where you occlude. All right, Roger family, it's time to step up your barefoot shoe game. Now, we talk about foot health all the time on the podcast, but the winter months are coming, and Vivo's come out with some slick boots. These are their Gobi boots, and they have different colors on their website. Now, these have a wide toe box. They are flat, and they are flexible, and they are stylish and sexy <laughs> as boots. But obviously, Vivo is awesome because they not only have boots and casual shoes like their Novus right here, which again, wide, flat, flexible so that your foot can do what it needs to do within the shoe and you're getting the benefit of having your feet improve while you're walking around in shoes but they also have shoes for the gym like their modus again flat flexible wide toe box along with their primus light threes and all the classics that you know they also have shoes for running and trail running on their website so again for all barefoot type shoes vivo is your one-stop shop for pretty much all the types of kicks you need andrew how can they get it yes yeah, so you guys got to head over to vivo barefoot.com slash power project there you guys will see a code at the top make sure you guys enter that code and you'll save 15 percent off your order again vivo barefoot.com slash power project links in the description as well as the podcast show notes okay god there's a lot of questions. Guys, I'm going to go to the bottom of the questions right now, and then I'm going to try to work my way up. I'm going to go to the bottom to up, et cetera. So we're going to try to get to all these questions since there are no more super chats. On the subject of tendonitis, I have suspected extensor tendonitis on the top of my foot from running. Any tips on overcoming that? Um, Is that something you've dealt yeah. with before, Graham? In general... There's a there's a few different angles you could look at. If it's like directly on the top, then you know you would work on. I mean, there's like what distance, how long it kicks in. But in general, you'd want to think like, are the muscles that are working, like the calves, the tibialis, are they engaging? Um, are, are you getting time? So I'll, I'll say this: um, one of the things I've been interested in recently is like using the top, the the uh, the dorsal surface of the foot as like an actual moving. So just like you could do push-ups on your knuckles, yeah, you can use. You know, we do a lot, of, you know, some people. Uh, I've seen you do some of this shit. Well, so if you think about most people with their feet, they do like their feet are flat on the ground for squats or they do a rear foot elevated split squat, but they don't, you know, one of the things that was nice about the ATG split squat is it puts your big toes into extension. So you yeah. start to use the bottom of your foot, but you can also use and train the top of your foot. And so you have the dorsal portion of your toes, so your toe knuckles, and then you have the dorsal portion of your ankle. So like that, what's called the retinaculum that wraps kind of like as a seatbelt and pulls everything in. And that, in a sense, gets really stiff. So if you kind of do this uh, kneeling position where you sit down, you do a like half kneeling position. So you're on your ankle on top of your foot and you have one foot is planted, the other foot is on top, and you're kind of half kneeling and you're sitting down. You can spend more time through that. And then you can start to do uh, split squats, but with the toe knuckles pressed down and start to push through that all the mm -hmm. way from the toe knuckles to the top of the ankle. Start to think about that surface as a, a set of tissues you can actually work. And when you include that, I think you start to get a lot more push and pull and you both strengthen the connective tissue, but also put some load and force that it has to navigate. I think that's really valuable. So just thinking about your foot, um, and even you can like the inside and outside of the foot as well. So maybe not so much the inside. I think there's that isn't really a load bearing, but like 
Meaning you could walk on the outside edge of your foot. You could start to roll outside of that. You could put load there. The inside of your foot has a boning block with a malleolus of the inside of the, the tibia. So not as available, but you could start to thinking about, I guess the point is if you were to say the same thing, like my wrist extensions were were stiff. It's like, okay, then maybe, you know, you're not doing like wrist extensions or reverse grip curls and stuff. So like how do you get this tissue in and then put load on it? So that's where I would start. Mm. Okay. I would say that, you know, you can try the uh, pencil trick. You just take a pencil and you take the eraser and just dig that motherfucker mm. into the top of your, uh, the top of your foot and try to find in between the uh, like tendons of your foot. Hopefully your foot's not too fat and you can see some <laughs> <laughs> tendons and ligaments go between that and uh, press down with the eraser part of the pencil and just dig in there and just give a little shake back and forth. Maybe try like a minute and try to clear out stuff. And I would even do it on the foot that feels okay. Mm. And a lot of times when you go to the foot that feels okay, you find out it's not okay, that there's like a bunch of shit in there too because the movement pattern you have on one side is probably the movement pattern you have slightly on the other side. So I'd say give that a go. And also remember that everything usually comes from somewhere else. So mm -hmm. there's the actual area itself and then there's like all the shit surrounding it. So check out those tibs, uh, check out the sides of your shins. Mm -hmm. What are those? Pro uh, peroneals. Or peroneals. They, they, they actually go. switched it to the fibularis tendons because the peroneal mm. was too close to the perineum. That's one of my favorite Instagram DMs. People go, I have perineal tendonitis. I'm like, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you have just as a, a side note. Graham brought jokes. <laughs> yeah, lots of them. That's, um, that was about as good as a that, super brain joke right there. That's, uh, which I'm that's sure really, are amazing. Really good company to be in, though. Yeah, yes. yeah excellent. Yeah. The, uh, the My foot program, the aforementioned Ready to Run, Functional Feet, is free. So if you want to do that, if you have any foot issues, it's link in bio, all that stuff. So there you go. But So you might want to smash the shins, you know, just uh, get a fucking lacrosse ball in there. Um, just YouTube it, you know, look that shit up. Yeah. Something that actually I, I, I really have been digging a lot, and you can get these on Amazon. I literally just typed in gua sha tools. Mm. So you know those metal... Those Deanna metal. has one for her face. Yeah, yeah, but you can use, like, there's one that honestly looks kind of like fucking brass knuckles, but it's not, and then I have another one that's whatever. So I'll sometimes, I'll actually, every week, I'll go into the sauna, and I'll use that tool to kind of dig into tissues, so to self-massage myself, um, my on my forearms, my biceps, literally my chest. I'll put it on the bottom of my feet, my shins, uh, and that's... Those those are those are very worth it. Talking about something like that? No, no. no. It's that's um, like that's, different that's thing. the first thing that came up. So. Okay, yeah, yeah it's we'll like keep buff, going. Buffalo chips. That that first one, one that looks that's one? it's not that one specifically, but it's going to be with. So click that real quick. Uh, that wait, silver one. Know. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it, it's not specifically right that one. But I think if we go down and we look at what else they have. It says clitoral so to massager. The right. mm -hmm. Does it say clitoral massager? No, I was kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's another walk into a sauna and just see I have an idea what you're talking about. If you, type in, if you type in like self-massage gua sha, type just in walk that. right back out. Dude, I just saw it two seconds ago. One second. Hold Did on. you? Okay. Nope, that's not oh, it. Rams and Saints tonight. Who's, um, no, how, how are the Panthers doing? Oh, yeah, that one to the right, to the right. Uh, I think this guy here? Yeah, that, okay. that's a good one, but I purchased mine, and it came in a pack with multiple. So I have one like mm. that, but another one that's, like, on my fist. That's that has the one I saw, but I don't know yeah. where the fuck it went, but I anyway, have one of those two. No, those are pretty, those are pretty uh, And then there's also that, uh, what's that thing called that, that you can roll? Remember that thing? Yes. You can roll it on like your shins, the roller eight the, or something. The rogue something. something something. Yeah, that thing was that thing's really good. I still use that a bunch. I actually used it the other day because the sides of my shins, whatever they're called, <sighs> brought Wire. bothering me. Fibularis. Mm -hmm. Fibularis. How sweaty is in SEMA, bro? Has to be on gear. Fuck you, Wyatt. That, that guy, yeah, right. that right there. Right. That's exactly. The, yeah, that's the one I have. So I use that a yeah, lot. Yeah, SEMA's always all sweaty and red. <sighs> yeah. Because he's on so much gear. On so much gear. Um, okay. Now, next question from Sean Wanzer. Uh, thoughts on training without a specific goal, performance, or body composition goal in mind? 2023 has been the year of the old Mark quote, some for a few. Is that, is that a quote? Mm -hmm. Enjoy training more playful in 2023. I don't fucking know that quote. What is this quote? I'm some for a few. It's the best workout. Pick up something, some for a few. Yeah. Some oh, for a few. okay. Yeah. How many reps? Oh, some for a few. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I used to say that when I was a trainer and people hated it all the time because they like wanted to, you to be so specific. Pick one between one and 10. No. Like, it just doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> who cares if we end up with 13 reps or 18 reps? 
Like just I can't even count past six. Yeah, make it <laughs> just make it difficult. Yeah, that's the thing is I don't want to count. <laughs> I don't want to do my job, so just do some for a few. I Counting's hard. Sounds good. Counting very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Too difficult. <laughs> Fuck. It was just the eco- ecological approach to training, though. Mm-hmm. Just, ah, you'll figure it out. You'll make mistakes. <laughs> I think you can have a lot of fun without do mean, having... Do you mean economical? Ecolo- e- ecological. Ecological, sorry. I can't spreck in Ecological? Ecological. Eco-friendly? Like it's good for the, the environment? No. Or the e- Ergonomics? Economical. No, economical is I think what you mean, right? What about, he, he means no? ecological. I mean ecological. <laughs> what, about, what about thugonomics? <laughs> Thug-anomics. What's Thugonomics? Is that an album? That's John Cena. They didn't teach that oh, in my high school. Really? <laughs> Man, John Cena. He, he knows Thugonomics, yeah. Look it up. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, anyway, what was the question? Oh, we got oh yeah, yeah. Okay, the guy didn't really have like a specific goal. Thoughts on training without a specific goal for performance or body composition in mind? Yeah, I kind of feel like I'm always training like that. Mm-hmm. But you kind of, what he just said is like, if you have performance or body composition, that's a goal. You know, yeah. like he kind of labeled it there. It's like. I think there's always like an aim. You know, yeah. and I think if there's not, I, I think that uh, it can be like sort of like demotivating. Like it's not that fun well, if you don't have some sort of, it doesn't need to necessarily be like a rock hard goal or yeah. anything, but some sort of aim. Well, at least in life. Rock hard. Yeah. yeah. No, I was yeah. like, is that the, I was like, I wouldn't you like that. that? I did like it. Oh, <laughs> well, like for example. Trying to make you moist. <laughs> you can, you can maintain. <laughs> your, nice and slippery. <laughs> you can maintain your Real body. Real moist. <laughs> but do you have a goal in life? Like, is there maybe, you know, there's something in life that like sometimes the physical doesn't have to be your primary objective, but like, do you, I don't know, want to make more money do you uh, just... know the quote from big roy after he benched 900 pounds at super training <laughs> i'm about to he said i have no goals <laughs> really i was wow. like i was like what now what are you gonna do now he's like i have no goals <laughs> i was like that's the fucking greatest thing i've ever heard in my life it's awesome total equanimity yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. he got like relieved of, of the tension by benching that 900 pounds damn that's a lot of weight i were you about to say something? No, go ahead. I kind of think, because um, I, I like this, because it, it would be good to just, you know, build a habit of doing stuff outside of your general workout. You know, it could be when you're on walks, just randomly jumping here and there. Mm-hmm. Again, doing just seriously, just like, because like most people, yeah. they're not jumping in the gym. They're not jumping when they're playing a sport. So why don't you just jump around when you're yeah. on a walk? I'll sometimes jump and touch tree branches. But the thing is, is like, if you can just do certain things outside of your workout each day and build that into a habit, it really does add up. Mm -hmm. Um, And along with that, I think that you don't necessarily, it's a good idea to maybe look for certain things that you're potentially a little bit weak at. So for example, if you're not someone who does a lot of body weight training, you go and do pull-ups and you can only do like three or four pull-ups. Okay. Maybe work on some pull-ups because body weight strength is a good thing. And when that, when that becomes a strength, you can find something else that is somewhat of a weakness. Maybe you don't train your neck much. Maybe you don't do many things for your feet and your feet are really weak. That's most people, mm. right? You can add these things into your training and it's not like a big goal, but that little improvement, if you improve the function of your feet, if you improve the function of your neck, if you actually have the ability to jump, those things have very long-term dividends. Mm. So I don't think like your training has to be, has to have some big goal of like building a crazy amount of muscle or whatever, but having small goals for certain weaknesses that you currently have, those can, those can be huge in the long run. Yeah. I love that. Cause there's so many different things to work on. You know, I, yeah. I kind of stink at lunges. So I'm like, well, I'd never do anything about it. So of course I stink at them. I don't ever practice it. Yeah. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to start doing lunges. Like, Pretty much any time I'm at the gym, I don't have like a prescription for it. I'm not like, oh, it's got to do, you know, 100 reps or 75 reps or anything like that. It's just, I'm, I don't do them currently, hardly at all. And now I'm, you know, introducing them and I want to be able to do them a couple times a week. Mm. Just want to have a little bit better proficiency at it. So I like, I see and see idea of like, you know, get better at some of these things that you suck at. That's probably always in the background of everything anyway. And then I would also say that think about if you were talking to a friend and they wanted to get better at something, they wanted um, better finances. They wanted, um, they wanted to do better in school. They wanted just to do better at, at anything. Um, one of the, one of the key components to getting better at anything I think is some sort of organization Mm. and different people have different ways of organizing things. Sometimes people can compartmentalize it just in their head, but 
you know, humans react pretty good to the similar stimulus, uh, no matter who you are. Uh, you might not really love a schedule and you might not really love, uh, planning stuff and you might not love being meticulous or organized, but they're all things that fucking work. Mm. So what I would say is write it down. Like just, even though you're saying you don't really have much of a goal, I like the fact that you asked a question and you did mention like body composition, like start to play through it a little bit. Like mm. even just write it down, say, I have no goals. And then ask yourself if that's true. Do you have no goals in all the exercises in the gym? Do you yeah. have no goals in terms of body comp, in terms of how you look, in terms of how high you can jump, in terms of mobility? Maybe you feel like you've reached a lot of good places already. And that's where you could maybe write down that maybe you want to be faster. Mm -hmm. maybe by being faster because you wrote that down, maybe that means you need to focus on training your hamstrings more. Mm -hmm. And now you have uh, goals in the gym because you are thinking of things outside the gym, as Nsema was also mentioning, uh, that might give you that kind of North star. Uh, and a different took that and kind of go a different way for, you know, both of these guys, once they have a level of uh, consistency, like they have a, a meta habit, which is I'm in the gym and within that gym, th that space, they're like, oh, I'm going to work on lunches. So if you're struggling on the other end where you don't have a routine, you can make it fun. I mean, they like you could take a one goal every month and do a Bulgarian style approach. But remember every single person that's of note on Instagram or social media has a program. You could do in Seema's untapped program for a month. You could do an ease over to just like try a different sampler every single month for a year and see what you like and what you were inspired by. Cause you know, you want to learn how to run, do a running program for a month. You don't have to commit. But I think people don't, I don't know, for whatever reason, it's like if I, you know, we're bored. Okay, well, let's go to a restaurant. That's a fun way to spice up your, you're already eating. So why not go and get someone else's curated experience of food? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the biggest thing people don't take advantage of on social media is that you have in, in almost infinite, you have a, a large amount of different people's perspectives and coaching styles that you could sample over a year or six months or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And you can have someone curate a process and you could try on different shoes every single month. And it's just a little bit of money. It's like, it's, it's crazy. I, I just don't think people take advantage of that because they get like, I have to have this thing. It's like, if you don't have a thing, then sample a bunch of stuff. If you don't know what food you like, then go try a bunch of restaurants. I think goals will find you too. So mm -hmm. like, uh, we were in the gym not too long ago and we just happened to be in the gym at the same time. We started talking and I was like, oh, this is the way you flex this. Mm. We weren't specifically like working out, but now that's something that you're working on, right? Like oh, you're absolutely. working on a little bit better uh, mind-muscle connection. And I'm sure, Andrew, you can comment on this. Probably happens every time you're at jiu-jitsu. Part of the reason why you don't want to miss ever is because like, not only did you miss a training session you could have got better at, you missed a discussion where somebody's like, oh, did you ever try to do this to get out of that? And it just turns into this like, holy fuck, I didn't even know that there's a whole other side of... Mm. Like it just blows your mind. You can't stop thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when like you get something done to you and you're like, where did you learn that? It's like, oh dude, that was on Friday when you missed. Like, mm. uh, but all I was, <laughs> all, what I was going to say is like, what, a, what an amazing like spot to be in though. Right. Cause there's people that are struggling to just get to the motivation to get to the gym. This is just who he is. This is his lifestyle. He's like, yeah, I train and I actually don't have any goal. So imagine once, you know, he, he figures things out a little bit better. Like, this guy would be unstoppable. Well, one more note on that. I do think a lot of times, so just in terms of kind of my coaching experience, a lot of times people don't have goals because they don't know how to dream anymore. And I think a lot of that is you've become so used to feeling in pain, overweight, unathletic, she uncoordinated. Said you don't you have, know how to dream. Well, seriously. Like, I remember I got on a, a sales call with a guy and, you know, I was, I was launching this academy thing I'm working with now. And I was like, well, so it was a 15 minute call. I was like, no, no hard push. It was just like, what, what do you want? And I go, what do you want? And he goes, well, I just want to be able to put my fingers through my toes. I'm like, what do you want? And he like, I guess like we go through the conversation and I'm like, you know, you have kids and like, did you play sports? And it's one of those things where people give up on this like idea of being able to think, oh, I'd love to do jujitsu, but if I did this or this, this, and this would happen. And like, yeah. they kind of think that whatever they could pursue, they could only pursue at 10 to 20% of their capacity. It's like, what you were saying is like that your greatest potential lies in the blind spot of what you can't perceive because you're not looking for it. And so in some sense, that's why I like this idea of like, let trust someone else's confidence, find a program that's kind of laid out, sign up for it and just go through it. And once you start to see facts counter to your narrative, you might start to dream a little bit bigger. And the fact is like you find goals, find you in a sense, but you have to put yourself in a space where you can dream big enough, so to speak. And by big enough, it could be like, you know, more than the 5% of what you think you're capable of. Mm. I will say this too, on, on the note of, uh, this is the last thing I'm going to mention on this. Cause Graham said, try out a bunch of different programs. What do you do? Try some of these programs out. Please don't be scared 
of adding things into it, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. their the programs are programmed. There are movements, there are ideas, whatever concepts, but there might be something that you really wish you were doing. And you're like, but the program says to do this. <laughs> If you're working with a coach and they're programming for you and they have this, talk to your coach and ask them if they can have it in. If you're using some program from the internet, just add that modality mm -hmm. in. If you want to bench press on a bench, add bench pressing in. Don't, don't be scared. You know, that's not going to mess up your progress on the program. It, it, just add things to it if you feel like you want to. And guess what? You know, you have this thing called money you can use to pay for 15 minutes of their coach's time you signed up for. And they'll be happy to help or answer an email or whatever it is. It's like a lot of it's like... You know, you never get what you don't ask for. You just like, it, never mind. But yeah, no, you're right. But yeah, that was I dig great. it. All right, Tro. So going back, I took some pictures of the top questions. So we're going to go back to the top because I like this question from Richard Rectin. Um, you guys have any suggestions for something similar to 75 hard that might realistically be a bit too strict for me? But I want to challenge myself to something. 75 medium. <laughs> you just take whatever you think is too hard out of the thing and do it. What exact? So what? What is seventy five hard? It's multiple. Really. Seventy five hard is uh, one of the things that ends up challenging people quite a bit. Is there's two workouts a day and one workout is outside, um, but there's like it's basically five things for seventy five days. So I, what I would suggest to this guy is that why not just make up your own five? It's okay. Mm. Andy Frisella made it up. You know, like Andy Frisella is a genius and he he's an amazing guy. And uh, he's somebody I admire and look up to and love the motivational stuff that he puts out. But he, he made it up. Like all these things are made up. You have the opportunity to make it up. He would tell you the same thing. So if there's something on there that like is overpowering you, that's not allowing you to do it because you think it's too much for you and you don't think it's realistic, then just get rid of that one thing. So uh, the five things are like, some of them are really easy. It's like drink a gallon of water every day. And, and maybe that you don't even agree with. So you could like just tweak it whatever way. You know what I mean? Like milliliters per day of water. Drink a water. liter of water a day, yeah. yeah. Yeah, change it if you need to. You're supposed to be on a particular diet and it's whatever diet you want, which that's smart because there's some flexibility within that. You're supposed to work out twice a day. One of them is supposed to be outside. You're supposed to read 10 pages of, uh, of nonfiction. And uh, the last one is progress pictures. So it's, it's actually like, it's not that bad to like follow. Um, I did it a few months back and I, I really liked it a lot. And I, I just, when I got like midway through it, I was like, you know what? I talked about it a bunch in the beginning just to help encourage some people to do it. But I'm like, I'm not going to really, I don't feel right trying to make a big deal about this and make a bunch of fanfare about it. I don't have a job. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm, I'm a fitness person. And so of course I can work out all day. So I'm like, this is like, I don't, I don't like the, I don't like the way this feels to like, just share this. Like, of course I have time to fucking work out. <laughs> um, I have an unconventional job. I have somewhat of an unconventional life. Other people have similar lives to mine, but not everybody. Right. So I was like, I, and I also don't want to necessarily promote everyone to work out twice a day and to, maybe feel bad because it didn't work out twice a day, you know, stuff like that. The so. amount of times I see comments from people who start 75 hard and then like one day or they injure themselves because like they've gone from a place of not training much, maybe training three days a week to training twice a day, every day for 75 days. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's hard. Like, cause I fucking want to do 75 hard. I'm never going to do 75 hard. And I love to fucking train, but, but you, you know, know, sort of do almost yeah, I anyway. Say you are I, I mean, okay. Yeah. I do. But the yeah, thing yeah. is, is like, I, it's always doable. You know what I mean? Yeah. When people are doing 75 hard, they're doing, they're, they're trying to really push themselves at every mm -hmm. single workout. Whereas you can work out every day to an extent, but not every workout has to be a big gargantuan thing. We yeah. talk about that shit all the time. It can literally be like a 10, 15 minute little, little tiny. That's what the mm -hmm. problem is. Right? People are just biting off more than they can chew. Oh yeah. A lot more than, yeah. yeah. Do you have anything? 75 medium. <laughs> I, I dig That's it. I dig 75 it. over easy. Mm -hmm. uh, what about Graham? You you probably uh, maybe have issued some challenges, or maybe you have some programs that are like four weeks or things like that. Like, what, what, I don't know. Just what are your thoughts on any of that in general? Do you think it can sometimes be helpful to spark someone to head in the right direction, or you do not like the idea of it because then you end up with the and then what situation? Mm -hmm. You did that for this month, and now what the fuck are you gonna do? Well, that's inevitable, and that's one thing I think is interesting is people that have it's a, like it's to use Richard's phrasing, it's a mental quit in some sense when it's like, well, what if I do this? Oh, then what? It's like I don't. Let's cross that bridge when you get there. You know, it's like you're going to be a different person by the time you get to that point. I do like the idea of 
So in some senses, life is a challenge with a definite, definite end. You know, we die. And so like, if you go into something, you will, you will, this will end. And I think having a clear, like this will end. Cause then people are afraid of like, well, what happens afterwards? But like, you're gonna die. And so at some point everything stops. So at some point you will like, I like things that have a definitive um, commitment with like a declaration, but it's not just to say a thing. It's also, there's a finish, you know, start mid, middle end. So I think that it's a valuable structure. Um, and again, the goal of, it, so I would say the, the structure of that is pretty set and, and, and valuable. Um, what I think most people don't prioritize is who will I become as I go through this? And like, you know, in a sense, you almost want to have something. I'm going to go through a process that's transformative as a beginning, middle, and end. And at the end, I will have a different perspective and framework to think about the next piece. So I can just, you know, take it one one piece at a time. Use it as a, a stepping stone to yeah. potentially make you better. And don't stress so much about whether you nailed it. No, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, and if you have the. the like if you have enough awareness of like something like 75 hard will change your physical, your uh, the mental part, your, your sleep, whatever it is, like your learning, you're going to develop a handful of skills in this process that then will give you a new set of tools that you can look at the next challenge. And I think if I, – I, I can't think of – it wouldn't be called a challenge if it wasn't, but like it will challenge you and in that process. But I think a lot of this goes into like, you know, do you see your life as an evolving adventure in a story? Because if you look at, oh, I'm exploring something new, then you kind of fall in love with the thing over and over again. So I like the idea of, of even like deconstructing some of these challenges. And I know that people get upset because they're like, it's not that hard. It's not a challenge, you know, but. Well, it should be a challenge. You if, know, it's <laughs> yeah. If, well, if, if you uh, normally don't work out all that often and you're in a bad spot and you're not used to training. How about you try to get to the gym every day for 75 days or, or get some, let's, let's take the word gym out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get some sort of exercise in once a day. Who cares how long it is? You know, maybe make some sort of agreement with yourself that it's not four minutes, you know, like mm -hmm. it's 15 minutes, you know, or it doesn't count or something like that. That sounds totally fair and reasonable. And see if you can ride that out for, you know, 75 days, 10 days, 30 days, 20 days. Um, I think I think that that's where the magic is because of what you said because it can help change you it can help uh, and that's really what Andy Frisell is trying to do it's he's uh, way into personal development and he's hoping that if someone follows this it's not to it's not to follow it and just to say like I did seventy five hard I'm amazing mm -hmm. it's to follow it and the potential of becoming. Um, a better and stronger, more resilient person at the end. And I want to also mention, Andrew, could you pull up Dre's Instagram, every goddamn Dre, please? Mm -hmm. uh, it, if you find it hard to get a workout in or you find it hard to be consistent, we mentioned this earlier in the podcast, but please just get yourself a few pieces of at-home equipment. Because mm -hmm. um, for some, sometimes there's, there's a phase when you get yourself your equipment, you're super excited, you use it for a few days and it collects dust, but at the end of the day, you know it's there. And if you can, like Dre's doing a bunch of stuff in a gym, he's doing kettlebell stuff in his apartment constantly. You see this man's fucking glistening because he's working out with kettlebells in his in his like in his room, right? What's going on with those legs? They're so jacked. They're fucking huge. But get yourself a few pieces. You can get yourself a kettlebell or like a pair of dumbbells. You can get yourself some things from base blocks. They have a lot of good at home equipment. You can get yourself a slant board where you can do some slant board squats and stuff. But you can do a lot with kettlebells. And for those days that you're like, I don't want to go to the gym, which is fair then you have those things that you can do at home. That's why I have those at-home pieces because there's not every day that I want to work out here, you know? So I'll get a really good workout at home and then go sit on the couch and chill with my dogs. It's, it's, it's you, 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 you take out that barrier of entry, right? So please invest in yourself. Get some at-home equipment. Trey is like, he's so proficient at all this stuff. He makes everything look so fun. And then you go to try <laughs> it and it's like, it's just not the same. You're like, oh man. But there's a lot of ideas on his page. Like 100%. there's so many movements you can do. Just looking at his tippy Alice, like they actually <laughs> protrude at, like I've never oh, seen yeah. someone's tibs that actually. Hey, have hey, you not looked at my tibs, bro? Relax, relax. Normally everybody. I'm under your tibs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. You want to give him context for what you just said? Because people are going to think you're under my tits. No, it's bro. exactly what you think. Okay, that's fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put his knee on my Does it seem I mean to you at practice? Uh, he's, he's uh, what do you got, firm, but uh, strict, and firm. Tough, you can't even, love. you can't, he, he's so mean that you can't even mention how mean he is on the show without feeling intimidated. 
It's, it's almost bad because like he, Oh you think I was being mean huh <laughs> You haven't seen anything yet <laughs> Alright next question <laughs> uh, From Valerie Page If we're gonna carry the boats <laughs> If we're gonna carry the boats <laughs> Who's gonna carry who's the gonna boats, carry the boats? <laughs> Don't forget the logs <laughs> When the logs Alright I'd like to know what <laughs> Slash if you all are doing anything for grip And I think she has an add on question to this mm. Grip slash forearm slash Last wrist strengthening and mobility on the regular. Mm. What do you do? What do you recommend? Uh, I just like to do some farmer's carries here and there. So I don't do a lot of stuff for grip, but uh, I'm not in a sport that uh, requires it. So I think uh, Andrew and Simo will have some good stuff to say on this. And, and, and uh, Graham. Yeah. Graham, I know that you did a lot of study and a lot of research on the hand mm. and kind of how the hand works and all that cool stuff. Uh, okay, so broadly, I think there's a cool thing. They're called mudras, which then you could take a der derivation, but like in a uh, Hindu Indian practice, Eastern practice, basically at different hand positions. And so if you look at your hands and, and fingers, there's things like, can you, you know, the I love you sign, there's the rock out sign, thumbs up. Those are all hand shapes, but you could, there's like almost an infinite amount of like, can you bring, can you bend your middle finger at your thumb and you'll notice side differences on side to side. Um, that I think is interesting just to get a base level of your, your coordination because the hands and the feet are wired similarly, which is you have your neuromuscular coordination. Can you actually move and engage with those? And then once you have the movement, then can you load it? And so, you know, broadly speaking, there's an infinite amount of things and doing something like jujitsu would be ideal. But if you don't have that, then, you know, I found the kettlebell juggling, hanging, um, mace, like having something that forces your hand and wrist to hold different things. And then, of course, rock climbing is probably the Ooh, simple right best thing. That was a weird video I saw yesterday. That's a David I don't know Weck what the thing. hell he's saying, but like. That's a David Weck thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is my peace sign because it goes to war quick. Mark Bell. <laughs> <laughs> the intensity in it. Yeah, but yeah, like, voice. so fired up. The, the, I think what's interesting is like just even if you study your own hands, like there are mm. certain things that can I bend the, the fingers at different places. And you'll notice on one hand, um, like for example, if you put your. Your pinky, your middle, and your thumb extend, and you bend your second and fourth fingers. You're going to notice a difference between one side. Like, why can't I? Can I bend both the fingers in the middle joint and then flex them all the way down? And you'll notice that there's differences from hand to hand. And it's like you start to just play, play. Just even that awareness will start to open up a different uh, like the homunculus of your brain that wires and shows like the mental mapping. Like that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So that's a start. But then there's infinite variations. Yeah. There's a ton of stuff. Uh, people like who are listeners of the podcast already know like these pro hands thing I got on Amazon. I also have finger extensors that those I also purchased here. on. Yeah, those seem impossible. I literally that you one have is to, tough. You have to put your hand in there a little bit more. So if ah. you put if you put your got to dig your fingers down deep. This is a lighter one. You know you can get yourself different levels of that. Um, the reason why I got these things is because when I started jujitsu and I looked at older grapplers, like guys who've been grappling for a decade plus, their fingers looked really like just janky. And actually, this tendon in this pinky, there was one day that it tore four four years ago, where this like. It was literally like, boom, down. So I had to wear a stint so I could come back. But that's what got me really focusing on trying to strengthen my hands and my mm -hmm. fingers, which is why I got those finger extensions and stuff. But I do a lot of like body weight stuff where I'm using my hands. So pull-ups, push-ups, dips, mm -hmm. kettlebell juggling, as Dan Graham mentioned. Um, those things are all super helpful. There are obviously push-ups. I don't do fingertip push-ups. Oh, really? That's actually a very good idea of something you can do for your fingers. Yeah. Um, you can also get yourself, you know, if you want to get yourself some of those, uh, what are those thick grips called? Uh, fat grips. Oh, like fat, fat grips, yeah. Fat grips mm -hmm. are a good tool. Like you can add those to some of your workouts. So now you're doing a little bit more grippage when you're doing certain things. It does take away from the weight you'll be doing on some movements. But at the same time, if you want to work on your grip a little bit, it's easy. You can do that with a lot of stuff. I'd say right? hold your deadlifts. You know, if you're if you're trying to build up a grip for deadlift, just hold your deadlifts at the top. I always found mm -hmm. that to be pretty uh, useful. You also would grip the bar a particular way, right? Like a pistol grip. Did you find that that helped strengthen your grip at all or did that uh, do something different that was just to, for for me it was just helpful for me to when i was doing pulling movements just to kind of trigger myself to kind of pull with my elbow and get mm. into my lat rather than gripping fully with my hand and then i'd get all this activation oh. here and, and then that's pull. something that you're a fan of too right is not like over not gripping more than is necessary right oh and jujitsu that's well for for mm. grappling for anyone who does jujitsu that's a that's a huge thing beginners will death grip everything mm. um but even with lifting right like you i think you mentioned that before right yeah yeah, just yeah. grip whatever is necessary for the weight, but you don't have to. I never over grip things with, with, with weight unless I'm trying to like work on my forearms or something. Mm -hmm. Right. But, um, hmm. yeah, just a few. Yeah, I think that's useful because I think it helps kind of save some of those muscles for when you do need it, when you're doing something harder that actually requires your grip, something like a pull up or something, you might 
um, kind of automatically, especially at the end of your set, you might start to grip the bar a little bit harder. It's kind of good to think yeah. about your fingers like hooks. Mm. Like, I mean, I know there's the hook grip, but when you're doing other things, you can kind of like, even when you're doing bicep curls, you don't have to fully grip. You can think of your fingers kind of like hooks and then pull up and just try to engage the bicep more. Mm. That's that's a concept that you can play around with with different movements in the gym and just kind of see how your brain accesses the tissues you're trying to work. Did Ian Danny fix you? Ian Danny is a fucking magician. <laughs> he fix you just one time, one session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was there. I fucking That's did crazy. something to my wrist when I was like hitting the heavy bag one day. So there's a little bit of a thing here. And what happened was I wasn't able to like really do push ups. One thing that I wasn't doing much of personally was a lot of myofascial release on my my arms. I was doing myofascial release everywhere, but I really just wasn't doing much on my arms. So Ian came in. He looked at me, and then he had me do some stuff. I wasn't able to. I did like seven push ups and had to call it quits because like that area of my wrist was in pain. So he did some, you know, did some direct work there, but then he went into my forearm. He found some fucking sticky tissue right here. So he literally like, it was, it was pretty painful, but he really dug into that tissue there. Right. And then after a few digs, I literally felt like a rush of liquid. It felt mm. like there was something that was going into my wrist. I was like, Ooh, what the fuck? Then I went down I was able to bust out like 15 push-ups. Now there was still there was still some discomfort there, but I was actually able to load my wrist. Whereas for a while now, I haven't really been able to load on top of that right wrist. So one thing that told me was, okay, you need to pay attention to those tissues in your arms and you need to like do you need to do release there because like with everything that I do, that that area can get gunked up too. Um, and that was a hole, but it was it was just really dope. Like myofascial release stuff. If you don't do it at all it can give you a big benefit, especially if you're someone who's never done it before. But if you make it a habit, then it just, it, it plays a big role to any athlete, any person. Yeah. You're not going to find an Ian Danny in your town, but you can find someone that can work on you. So do your best to investigate, try to find somebody because doing the myofascial release yourself is effective and saves money and things like that. And it's, it's still necessary, but having somebody do it for you is huge. It can help change everything for you. Yeah. There was a $2 super chat. Someone telling you, uh, mm -hmm. my, oh, from Derek, mind bullet dip pouches. Just saying. Well, from lip dip pouches? Yeah. Um, yeah, we kind of thought about that before, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, like snuff or whatever that shit's called, right? <laughs> Isn't that... Yeah. Uh, that, uh, I think snuff is a different type. It's just oh, a snooze. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you put it like in your lip or something, right? Little yeah, pouches, snooze. yeah. So technically, what is snuff, though? Because I know snuff is... I might have been way off. With snuff is that. nasty, but what is snuff? Snuff. That's like cocaine. Is, is it mixed with tobacco and carry or something? Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's a mixture. Oh, no, I was thinking of smut. Okay, <laughs> my bad. Try, try snuff is uh, a breeze, a snuffed out candle. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Graham, try flipping that little extensor inside out. I don't think this is impossible. Did you put it on? No, I put did. it inside out and then try it if that you way. You put your fingers in there, kind of deep. When you but when you put it when you put it in deep like when you put it inside out, you get better leverage. Just Nasty trust me, try it. I'm doing it. It's hard to get these fingers in here. Okay, there was a question that was directed specifically at Graham. I'm trying to find it, and I'm going to try to get to all your questions, peeps. So I got a question for Graham. Mm. Ask your question to Graham. See, I feel like this pinky just is it, it, this thing. <laughs> makes me feel like I'm nah, inferior. It, yeah, inferior, inferior man. What if that was your Use name? Use this one. Oh yeah, a little lighter one. Okay, lighter right. version. Yeah. Um, your uh, your fiance, fiance is uh, beautiful, wonderful, and I love her. She's an amazing person. Yes, indeed. She uh, does gymnastics. Yes, and she coaches gymnastics. What yep. are some things that you learned from her? Ooh. I, th I'm, this is a great question because this is something I thought about a lot. Um, one of the things I've had a great experience every time I've tried to learn something there is that there is always a regression. Meaning, you go from there. So, in gymnastics, they go from level two through level ten. Uh, level two through five are the called the uh, compulsory, and level six through ten are the uh, optionals. But every within the the stages you go through, there's skills that you get you compete on. You develop. So a you routine. may watch someone do a routine and go, "Oh, I can't do any of that." Well, but the good watching, news is that there's a regression of every single thing. Yes, because what you're watching is going to be all level ten if you ever see anything. And so what you're mm. seeing the level two kids is doing a scale down, like second grade version of that, so to speak. But what's cool is that every they are, like the gym is full of differently shaped pads and, and mats and different thicknesses, and there's if you go through their entire processes, how can I create 
the tiny steps, if a step feels too big, okay, well, that's fine. We can break it down. And so, for example, um, I, this was uh, last week I was in there and I had this dream the night before I did a backflip. I was like, oh, you just jump up and pull your knees up. And so then I, you know, made a mistake. I told Tiana about that. And she walked in as this coach there, John, he was like, I love teaching people how to do a backflip. I'm like, that is, I'm terrified. Like, this is absolutely, I'm like, there's no way I think I could do this. This is something I'd be like, you know, it just doesn't fit my identity. But I was like, he was like, oh, well, we'll, we'll just try. We'll do a we'll little baby step, but one step at a time. And when it feels too hard, we'll stop. I was like, okay. And so I was like, what would the first one look like? And so I'm telling you, he goes through, you know, 20 different variations. Like he takes a drill and a slight little variations, a little by little by little. And then within about 30 to 40 minutes, I'm like actually doing a backflip over his shoulders. And it was like, wow, damn. it was pretty, well, that's the crazy thing that I think is, is, um, well, not crazy. The most valuable part of that entire experience, every time I've learned something there, is that, you know, if you have a good coach, they seamlessly walk you through the this, then this, then this, then this, then this. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you're doing something that you literally would have never thought was possible. And that's, you know, I just think that there's a lot of value in that approach. Because, I mean, her, she's constantly on Instagram looking at other coaches and all the coaches are putting up, if you have trouble with this, try this. And it's like a tiny variation and there's a million tools. And it's just a really cool place that the foam pits. The other thing I think is is valuable too is like if you look at the entirety of the gym, I guess when you get in competition, you have to really deal with the uneven bars and the beam and stuff like that, and it's firm and it's challenging. But every single thing in the gym is designed to make it soft and safe and feel comfortable. And I think there's a lot to be said for the softness. So a lot of people like to stay hard, like that kind of works, but <laughs> you know, but like if you think if you push your your skin or your joint, if you're trying to do self myofascial release and it's too hard and you're on the ground and it's concrete, like you can't relax into that. But if you can get into a foam pit, you could take away this element of danger, your body really physically relaxes. So those are two things that I think have been really valuable, just observing her. How, yeah, how do they is there, are there other ways they encourage uh, and pull like fear away from people? Because probably I'm thinking in my head, probably what stops people from certain types of movements and executing them really well is just be just like fucking go for it be free you, you can't not yeah and i think that's that's part of it which is you know, they so there's a physical side there's there's aids so if you look at um they have like a spring track so if you want to learn you see the routine where in, you see in, in uh, cheerleading too where they'll run across and do like a, a cartwheel to a handspring to a back handspring whatever it is those things they learn those on things to give them extra boost extra bounce and so they the the you know, you'll, the you'll ground have a has a little extra. Oh, well, the ground is, but they have extra tools on top of that, like a, a trampoline thing or like an inflated thing. And so they can kind of give you a sense of like, okay, you can do this a supernatural sense for what your body can do. So a little bit like wearing up. a slingshot. Mm -hmm. like wearing a, exactly. And so that it gets you the, the sensation of, okay, when I'm in air, I flip and I do this. And then you just go through, I mean, that's, it takes years to go through this process, but it's repetition, repetition, repetition. And so you, you kind of work through it at that point. And then they, they do a lot of like, um, help in a sense, like a physical help. It, it, you can, you might not trust yourself, but you can trust the coach. So for example, this backflip story, it's like, you know, he had me jump up and then tuck my knees in, laying on a pad. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to jump up and you're going to fight me. And so he made it a game. And so you can kind of do, they'll do psychological things where, you know, you're working with him and the coach is providing some of those things and spotting. And so over enough repetitions, he's mm -hmm. like, we'll start at 95% and then I'll help at 90%, then 85%. And you'll all get all the way down to 5%. And then one day, uh, and you'll, you'll do it. But it's like at that point, I can think, well, if I did this for 5, 10, 15, 20, 100, 150 reps, at some point, I'm like, I get so used to this thing that I've kind of gotten enough exposure. And so that that's a big piece as well. Because, but ultimately, that is the, I think, a failure of coaching. And so I'll say this because um, I watched, I, I think the vault probably one of the hardest things to do. That's where you sprint down the track and you hit the tramp, you hit the incline and you bounce off the pommel horse, whatever they call that. The inability to separate into different skills. So what I see is people, they go and, you know, they'll see these girls and they have them run 60 meters and it's like their running form is horrible. And that's, that's the joke is in gymnasts have horrible running form. It's like some of that is like a positive self. It's like a self sabotage because they, they're afraid of this thing. And it's like, mm. they're actually keeping those. Like if you look at Simone Biles, when she runs, that girl is, she is like a hundred percent dead sprint. And there's no reason to have bad form, but it's, some of it is like, they don't know, they don't have enough confidence. And so like, if you can separate the skills of like, okay, let's work on the running form. That's one piece. But then are you afraid of this thing? So let's get closer to the vault and just build up. Like, uh, and so that's where I see 
anytime there is fear, it's because you haven't separated the skills and allowed the body to kind of acclimate to that. So I think that's a piece of like a really good coach. Tiana is phenomenal because she works and does all the curriculum for two through five. And she has to constantly go and say, what's the, what's the hold up? And like, there's a psychological element, there's a physical element, there's an emotional element. Sometimes the girls come in, have a great day. And sometimes in the competition, like they practice the same routine over and over and over and over again. And they go to the competition and all of a sudden they're like, you know, there's, it's really, gymnastics is a really beautiful thing because it really forces so much of like you to develop if you do it right. You can just, you know, have the, the quintessential horrible thing where we're going to force you into over splits and make you do this. That's toxic, but whatever. Something I want to mention real quick, not about gymnastics, but about everyone who's asked questions so far. Like I mentioned, we're going to give away some Vivo stuff. We're going to give away two of these hunker and stools. Two it's, of uh, them? Yeah, we'll give away two of them. One of them's going to me. I fucking love sitting on these things. Uh, th those things are great. But the thing is, because from our last Q&A, there were some winners and some of the winners got their stuff, but you need to be part of the Discord. Discord. Then if your name is mentioned, you need to message me in Discord. You need to message me your name. You need to message me your email address. If you do not do this, you ain't getting your shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please, please understand that. And... To add on to this gymnastics thing, some Patrick Grobe asks, speaking of gymnastics, is gymnastics the pound for pound king of creating pure athletes? What do you guys think? Depends on if you're a male or a woman. So for example, women have seven events, or sorry, uh, men have seven events, women have four events, uh, but men are mostly around upper body. So there's a reason you see a lot of, it, there's two things. One is an opportunity cost to do a gymnastics. So I know if you do a gymnastics as a, as a foundational element as a kid and you're you know, elementary and middle school, and you do it, then you branch off. But if you continue to go through level 10, where they're at the gym three, four hours a day, four, five, six days a week, like there's an opportunity cost where you don't develop ball skills to be able to handle and run and move and do that stuff. It's an amazing, there is no better foundation. I mean, obviously you could look at other things like conditioning. Can you swim? Can you run? Can you do other aspects? But uh, for women, it's an incredible foundation because they are having to do upper and lower body dominant things. For men, most of their sports are really geared around the rings, the the palma horse, the uneven bars. And so, there isn't as much of a – like they get a, a kind of a, a strange physique development and there's no, the opportunity cost of the skills of developing. That's why in CrossFit, for example, most of the people that – the top women's champions you know, had a gymnastics background. You know, They could like mm -hmm. handstand and do that kind of stuff. They have body awareness. Not so much for the men. You know, Baseball seems to be the weird thing. So uh, I, I'd say there's a few things to go into that. But women, it's an amazing sport. I think it's a great foundation. But for, you know, my future children, will they Wasn't Fraser a gymnast? Mm, Matt Fraser? Yeah. Um, Olympic lifter. He was just an Olympic sure. lifter? Oh. Yeah. But he may have been that, that yeah. as well. It, it, I'm it shouldn't be. Tripping. It shouldn't be mutually exclusive. Like, you would want to think, I would want my kid to do some form of conditioning, whether it's swimming or running, like a, a discipline like that, to learn how to think and move. And then there's some form of gymnastics to learn, like, the basic physical awareness. I mean, that's the original, like, gymnasium, you know? Uh, some the proprioception that individuals and the yeah. body awareness that athletes get from being able to just like having that slight gymnastics background as a kid, because yeah. you can maintain that when you learn how to do these flips and you learn all this like body weight stuff as kids, you don't have to do gymnastics for the rest of your life. Mm. You could do that shit for a few years and mm. it just sticks. Mm. I know people who like did gymnastics yeah. for three years as kids and they can still do walking fucking handstands. Mm. They can still do fucking kip ups yeah, and all this stuff. Some gymnastics is really useful. Yeah. I don't really know much about soccer, but. You know, like if it, basketball is a great sport, but it's very difficult for young kids to play basketball. Mm. Is the same true with soccer or can they just kind of play and they can still run and get some good exercise and even if they're three, four or five years old? I think that the, when kids play soccer, it ends up becoming bunch ball. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. Andrew knows. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, the kids will just chase the ball around the field. But I mean, but at least they're still moving around. Like, it's not like a whistle being blown a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, in basketball, like the, oh, the ball goes off your saying. foot. There's a foul. There's like, you mm -hmm. know, it, and people forget which way to go. And like, yeah. it's just <laughs> kind of some, main, which probably still happens in soccer. But I think, I think a sport where, the kid that the kid is uh has an opportunity to really move around a lot i think is good i think uh this idea that your kid's gonna really get much from going to like football practice uh when they're seven eight nine years old i just i just don't think they're gonna get much I'm not, standing around. I'm not saying it's completely useless like maybe your kid really wants to do it or something like that but yeah it's a lot of standing around baseball you're not going to get much from and so you have to try to figure out like a sport that's going and i think something like gymnastics you drop them off. They're there for 90 minutes or an hour. Like they're going to mm -hmm. get put through, even though there's a group of 13 kids or however many, they're going to be getting like some reps in. And I think that as a parent, I think that's what you're hoping for is that 
you're signing your kid up for something they can really um, transform, change them, yeah, yeah. transform and, and develop from. Yeah, and and, and it also it's kind of cool because it's sort of forcing them to do stuff, which mm. which isn't always great. But it also has its place. It's. It, I think what's interesting and about that- And the other that, kid just did it before you too. Yes. You saw that and you're like, mm, it's like an and maybe you can't do it. It's okay. Like, it's fine. You'll get your own skill at some point. Well, it's an individual thing where you're all expected to go, but because everyone's having to do the same thing, there's no like, I'm being singled out. Whereas the hard part in like soccer, volleyball, basketball, baseball is an objective. And so like volleyball is great, but like if one kid sucks and they can't get the ball up in a sense, then like- the I can't, I'm losing practice because we can't work together. There's, there's teamwork there, but gymnastics is this weird thing where it's kind of a team where you're, you know, me and five other kids are all doing the same thing, but it's individual. And I like, I get to watch you do it because you messed up. I don't feel as bad messing up. And so I think there's a lot of things that stack there as well. Mm. Yeah. And obviously gymnastics has like a strength to weight ratio. That's awesome. So mm -hmm. I think uh, also, you know, trying to have a kid be in something that, uh, is going to help them again. There's enough exercise in there to where it's productive. Um, cause ultimately I think you're trying to have the kid get exercise, have your child get some exercise to help them manage, uh, just modern times of mm -hmm. the different foods that we have access to. And if you look at someone like Sam Solik, uh, he's done an incredible job with uh, bodybuilding, but he used to be a diver. Mm. And so Sam Solik being as lean as he is now, it ain't no thing for him because he's always been lean. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't know if always is the right word, but he, you know, you're not going to be a diver and mm -hmm. have a lot of body fat on you. You know, he was really lean when he was doing that. And therefore it's easier for him to maintain that leanness now. Yeah. All right. And you know, one thing is, I don't know if he did a sport that required a lot of like aerobic capacity, but there is something, and we've talked about this. It's like, Chris Bumstead played soccer. Dale and Bailey played soccer. Fucking what? Stan Efferding played soccer. Mm -hmm. A lot of some, and I, I know I personally know a lot of like like Kendall Richmond. He was a wrestler. Uh, there's this Steph uh, Cohen. Steph yeah. Cohen. Like yeah. there seems to be a link between pretty high athletes. level too. High level soccer. Oh, oh, she played on her national team. Yeah. She, I think she was on the Argentina national team. Um, but there does seem to be a little bit of a link between athletes who had like a movement-based sport that had them moving around a lot. And then these athletes transitioning into power sports or sports where um, like building muscle, where it's just like you automatically have a bigger gas tank for things in the gym. You can. It seems that those athletes are able to handle more volume when it comes to lifting weights in the gym or powerlifting or something like that. They don't get fatigued easily because they've been doing a sport that had them running around all the time when they were younger. So there's, a, I think there is a side benefit to that too. You've been getting great sleep. You've been handling your nutrition. You've been working out in the gym. You may have been running and doing all the things that you believe are helping you get in better health, but you haven't gotten your blood work done. Mm -mm -mm. That's why we've partnered with Merrick Health because you could be doing all these things, but underneath the hood, there might be some deficiency or something small that could be the thing that moves you in the right direction. And without understanding what that is and how to change it with your nutrition or your supplementation, then you might just be spinning your wheels. So get your blood work done with Merrick Health, work with one of their patient care coordinators so that they can give you the ideas of what you may need to optimize in terms of your supplementation or your nutrition or potentially hormone optimization, and they can help you move in the right direction by helping you from the inside out. Andrew, how can they do it? Yes, you guys got to head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. That's M-A-R-E-K Health.com slash Power Project. And at checkout, enter promo code Power Project to save 10% off the Power Project panel, the Power Project checkup panel, or any individual lab that you select on their entire website. Again, MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. Links in the description as well as the podcast show notes. All right. Question from Moose. Given the diverse demands of hybrid training, how do you structure your training and recovery days? And are there any specific recovery practices or protocols that you found particularly effective? Everyone at this table, I think, Mark, you do running and mm -hmm. lifting, Graham, jiu-jitsu, Andrew, jiu-jitsu. What do y'all do? Sleep. <laughs> That's a big deal. Yo, it is. I, I, I don't mind taking a day off. You know, I don't mind, uh, you know, if I mm. something kind of hurts, I don't feel like I, I don't, I don't feel pressure to that. I, ha I don't feel pressure that I have to work out. And so not having that pressure is really nice. So if I wake up and something hurts, um, I'm still going to do some sort of exercise. I'm still going to walk. If my shoulder hurts, I might drag a sled. I'm still going to do something like something's mm -hmm. something productive is going to happen. 
Um, I really like doing one thing every single day that's kind of difficult mm -hmm. or kind of challenging or sort of time consuming. Like any one of those things can be hit and I'll be happy and satisfied mentally. But uh, for me, I don't, I don't really structure anything. But if something comes up where it's like, oh, I don't think I can do that today, I don't have any problem passing it up. Well, I think the something you said earlier and we've talked about is the idea of like two to three good sessions that in some capacity is really helps me because you, you, you know, there's this idea, which I don't know how true it can be is that every single time you want to go do something, you're going to have an amazing workout. That's not going to, you know, you're going to just crush it. And it's like, maybe, but by definition, if you're always training at the same capacity, then no one thing is peaking. And so it kind of like, if you look at the ebb and the flow of that, you know, if I look and say, what's my top priority? And so we kind of training for a jujitsu competition. So I was like, those are my top priority things. And so there's some things that are top priority. There's some things that are like a second thing, a second priority that you're maintaining. Um, but you, you have a specific, you can maintain with a general capacity or you can maintain a specific skill output. So running, for example, you could think there's a cardiovascular capacity, there's a distance tissue capacity, then there's a plyometric uh, high end output, like, um, like sprinting in a sense. So it's like, you know, I'm maintaining, but I want to maintain a specific skill. So I'm going to focus on that. And, you know, you can still do the thing, but you bring less mental and psychological um, stress to it, maybe like less importance on it. So I'm going to go out and do this thing. But for example, recently, like shifting a priority is like, I'm going to go out to the track, I'm going to go sprint, but I'm going to not bring the timer. So I'm just going to go do this thing, focus on how it feels and then be less objectively driven by that thing. And then when I go to the gym, you know, there's a certain level of uh, overall attack. So I'm going to focus on the, the muscle engagement and feeling this, this, this movement as opposed to a numbers-based objective. I'm going to try and lift as heavy as possible. So I think in that, you know, I, this is kind of my own personal gripe, but there is this kind of constant thing like the hybrid athlete, which is like, it's like, it's not really a hybrid athlete. It's just suffering in some capacity. I'm going to go suffer this thing. I'm going to go suffer that thing. So it's the same psychological skill set. And I think that kind of is a little bit less difficult. Like, a true hybrid athlete, like I don't know, Michael Jordan, you know, he was either basketball or baseball and it took him a while to transition between the two. It's like, it wasn't like he was basketball and baseball in the same season. He wasn't switching between the NBA and MLB. So there's a level of like, if you, you can be highly skilled and focused, but even within that you can maintain it and you're going to go through competition seasons of others. So the question is like, how do you maintain like your focus and your priority and then not, dig too deeply by keeping the other things relevant. I don't know. Moose, 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 moose. I quickly want to see an aspect of your question. I think, okay, one thing that you got to be good at is auto-regulation. Um, because there are going to be some days, whether it's you're doing grappling or whether you're doing running and you're really trying to improve at your strength training, but you just got to auto-regulate your, you know, your workouts. And auto-regulation means like you may have a program, you may have numbers that you're trying to hit based off of last week's progression, but you'll go into the gym one day and you will just feel fucking tired. Mm -hmm. You won't have it. Like you, you'll feel like, ooh, I don't want to be here. And maybe some days you don't go there, but maybe some days you do go into the gym and you just aim for stimulus. For the most part, I think that you should be aiming for stimulus when it comes to training in the gym anyway, like trying to stimulate that range of most and stimulate the tissue you're trying to hit. And yeah, you want to load, but you don't want to load too heavy that the whole idea of what you're trying to do is lost because you're seeking trying to do a heavier load. But on those days where you just don't have it and you go into the gym, go through the, just go through the motions. Yeah, Mark you can do some of the- points. Go through, do some of the movements, um, get into the range of motion, maybe use lighter load, maybe slow things down. And as you do go through the workout, you might actually start feeling better and then you can push. But there's going to be those days where you're going through the workout. And you're like, you know, I'm just going to go through the motions. I'm going to get blood flow. And the thing is, is like we talked about with uh, one of the questions earlier, those are going to be really good days that are going to help you recover because you're getting blood flow to all your muscle tissues. But at the same time, even though you weren't able to push that workout super hard, you don't have to think about it as an ineffective workout. Mm -hmm. Because again, if you're someone who's pulling different levers, whether you're grappling hard in some days of the week and then you're lifting, like you got to realize you only have so much energy and some days are going to come where you go into the, you go and you grapple and you just, it's, you're feeling kind of beat. So maybe that's the kind of day where it's like, you kind of take your rounds a little bit easier. But on the days that you feel you really got it, those are the days that you can push. That won't be every day, but on the days that that's there, you can push. So get very good at auto-regulating because the problem is, is when like, and this is where I think like, if you're doing a program, cool. But like, if you have someone who's like made a program for you and the program says to do this, uh, 
especially when I was like working with powerlifters and bodybuilders, I would always try to tell them, hey, if you're not feeling this today, just lower the sets or whatever, just lower your lower your intensity so you can still get through that. Because if, if you push every single day, even on the days where you know you should back off, that's just an easy way for you to fuck yourself up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm still <clears throat> getting the, the literal bumps and bruises from learning what Mark and Ensima just talked about. Uh, yesterday, I woke up tired. I didn't really have it, whatever that it is. I still went to jiu-jitsu, uh, did my best, and I was just talking to Ensima about this. I don't know why during class and doing drills, I just saw it after, like, I saw it the biggest dudes in the room. I don't know why the fuck I did that. I should not have done that. I got my ass kicked, but it was like every single round, I was just like putting in more and more work. And this morning I woke up with my groin hurting again. It's like, oh, big surprise, dumbass. Um, so that, and then a, a couple episodes ago, we talked about how I took an entire week off of jujitsu and what that did for me. The very next time I came back, things were clicking and jujitsu was extremely fun again. And it was freaking wild to experience that because I've never done that before. And it was really fun. So again, trying to piece the two things together that Mark and Seema were talking about is what I'm still trying to figure out how to do correctly. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I'm learning by like actually getting literal bumps and bruises. (laughs) Do you have an ace sleep? Do you sleep on an ace sleep? Yeah. Did you look at your HRV and heart rate? I can check. but Yeah, do that because I... A week ago. But there's also, sorry to cut you off, but like I also have my son sleeping next to me, so I think it it, it fucks up the reading, but there's a good chance that it's still very accurate. That would be interesting. It's just even to look and see kind of those things, because a week ago, a week and a half ago, I had some stomach thing, so I had a little fever, like just completely couldn't hold anything in my tummy for like a a day, but Monday was horrible. And I went to Jitsu, and it was like, you know, it was like I had no issues. I wasn't sick, but I just felt like dead tired I had, uh, sluggish and, just, and i looked at my the eight sleep and i was like my hrv was super low everything was super off i was like oh no wonder you know in mm-hmm. some of those senses it's like you can't there are tools you can you know if to a team's point if you don't know how to auto regulate then get a tool that helps with some feedback and then use that to because you use what like an aura ring and a you thing look. yeah i use quite a few things but the thing is is i don't look at these things every day at, at the, but and at this there, point you don't you know no no starting. but i still don't look at these things every day yeah. and i didn't i well i did initially but i realized very quickly that i shouldn't look at it every day because i'd wake up sundays feeling good and i'd be like i'm good and i'd look at it and be like your hrv is bad and you need to recover. oh yeah that's the like, worst. Fuck. Like, i hate that i don't <laughs> like you know that's why i mean yeah. i'll i'll look at these things like maybe once a week just to kind of see and see okay i can look back at this to because i generally kind of know what i do on each day mm-hmm. but looking at it every day and it tells you oh you need to recover or your shit or whatever i more so try to go off of how i'm feeling but the like these wearables do give me an idea of how i can improve weekly mm-hmm. it's almost like you know it's good for somebody to weigh themselves each day, but it's not good for them to put stock into how much they weigh every single day. Mm-hmm. It's good for them to look at the weekly average because if you're like, oh, I weigh two more pounds today, oh my God, eh, you know what I mean? It's 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 not good for you. It's not good. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the, it, it, your body will leave breadcrumbs. So like uh, towards the end of class for this week, I'm like, I can see somebody getting past my guard or whatever they're doing. Like I need to react to that. And I just watch it happen. I'm like, oh fuck, I did. Okay, don't do that next time. And then it happens again. And I'm like, yeah, bro, you're you're tired. Well, that's when you just say, well, say, you know, what you could have done here. <laughs> oh yeah, you stop them. You're like, yeah, you're doing great. But what I would know, yeah, no, fuck that. <laughs> also, guys, uh, the Discord link is in our description. By the way, just so you know. Um, how many more questions do you guys want to take? Two, two. Okay, this next question two is three. from Amanda Sereno. Have any of your significant others ever had trouble of being super fatigued slash weaker during their period? If so, what are some of their ideas of improving energy slash strength? I've recently been hit with this while lifting. Mm. Uh, okay. If it happened, uh, I wouldn't care. So, I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've never heard That's my wife. That's something you have to deal with. Yeah, I've never heard my wife uh, Andy's say a stud. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I texted my girlfriend about this. Um, to just, Cause like right now she's on prep. She's like lost like 27 pounds. 27 um, pounds. Yeah. Sam's 120. She- she's 126. Right? Today she hit 126. Oh she God. started off at 155. What? Like what? her erectors are permanently there. Even when she doesn't laugh, her erectors are just there. One Dog, she's so fucking like I touched her waist and it's just like I feel rib. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> more than twice her. That's crazy. I, I, I know, I know. I'm literally double her body weight. But I texted my girlfriend about oh. this so I could kind of uh hear that so I could 
tell you what she said, but I'm just going to read her text. Hi, Amanda. Try toughing it out. Oh. Jake, Jake, and then, and then she, and said she said, I, then she said joking. I mean, and I mean, really though, just dealing with it and giving yourself grace while still pushing yourself. <laughs> if she's talking about training intensity, you just have to accept that some lifts will suck during your cycle. I asked her, did electrolytes help at all? She said, no. And then um, I said, is sleep any different? She said, I mean, the cycle is unavoidable. You're going to have varying energy levels. She also recently, I think she's lost her cycle since she's gotten so lean. This is something that happens when you get extremely lean. Um, women will lose their cycles. When I was working with some bikini girls, when they got super lean, their period just went away. And then it came back when they started eating more food and getting body fat. She said, cycles are unique to each individual and they can change over the years. So it's just finding what works for you. I actually just wrote that I lost my period. I allegedly two weeks late, but I'm also a little off. I wouldn't be surprised if it's gone at this point. Definitely not pregnant. Ha ha ha. And that, that <laughs> oh Amanda is uh, what she said. And when I, when I worked with clients that were women, I would have them kind of mark when they had their cycles on their tracking sheets, just so that we could pay attention to how they perform during their cycle. Some women have no effect during their cycle. Mm. Some women mm. actually felt better during their cycle. And then a few of the women hmm. didn't feel good during their cycle. So like those, those, the, the women that like felt shitty during their cycle, we would just like kind of take training a little bit easier, have that be kind of a deload type of week. Though if, if you're a woman that, you know, you feel shitty during your cycle when it comes to lifting, deload that week, kind of go into the gym, get a pump, feel good, whatever. But if you're a woman that's like, for some reason, it's just like, ah, fucking go in and kill it. Cause those, some of women do really feel good. Like they feel better in the gym when they're having their cycle and kill it then. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'd like to uh, preempt the clip with uh, four men talking about women's cycles. Right. Great. That's why I asked her. <laughs> yeah, that was a good move. Good <laughs> move. Thank you. Oh man. Okay. Were you about to say something? You, you would. Well, I would. The one thing I, I think is interesting is like technically, when the cycle starts, your body's kicking back in to like release another egg. So you get the two week period from the day of the the cycle starting to your ovulation date, <laughs> roughly. And then if you go through that period, your body you have changes in your skin, changes in your overall complexion that like is more attractive to a mate as they say. Um, so mm. that's why a lot of people have more energy and more focus in that, that phase. And there's different phases of your cycle where you'll have different elasticity with your ligaments. Uh, typically people have less energy after they've ovulated and that kind of like their body's getting ready to shed because they realize they don't have an egg in a sense, or they don't know they don't have an egg, but they don't let the egg hasn't been fertilized, but they're getting ready to like, we need to now take care of this potential baby. So I would think is interesting is we're feeling very weak during the cycle you might want to check things like iron and uh, like because you're bleeding. And there's, if you have a heavy period of your bleeding, that might be something that's thrown off because I think so the high variation of that, the hormones are happening consistently across women. But the question is, are you nutritionally able to sustain that blood loss or is that taking something out of you? So th there is variation. But and there's also a lot of podcasts of actual women that can talk about this. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think the nutrition, I think the one interesting piece is like if you feel very weak at that point, it might be worth revisiting how much red meat you're getting, how much creatine you're getting, uh, iron, uh, and that would be a good blood test. I think most, at least with a blood test, uh, I've I, I taken have Tiana work with. They make you take your they, they make you take your blood test on the third day of your period, so they can get a, a basic reading. That would be the interesting thing I think to look at. I will say, Sam eats. <laughs> she's actually in the chat right now. That woman can eat a fuck ton of ground beef. We go to Trader Joe's, and actually, she probably went this morning. She will buy like literally sixteen packs packs of ground beef at a time. Damn. Sixteen packs of ground beef at a time. Yeah, that that woman eats her meat. Um, and she says, "I think Graham is glowing. You look like you have a but some I, radiant energy on you." I learned what that means now. Apparently, what it's a thing mean? where if you're like you're you're like. A, it's like a, it's a meme. We look it up the meme because I, I won't say it as well, but like you're, you're not trying to give away. You're like a paid operative and you're trying not to give away your thing. Like I would be a CIA operative saying, oh, the CIA doesn't track your stuff. There's a double meaning to that glowing. Okay. But, Interesting. Hmm. I, I don't know if that's what you meant, but that's the thing I learned because I'm with the, the current trends. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, this well, I can identify with that one. Glowing. Or, Stress makes your body temperature rise. Introverts in every place other than our own room. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I literally just Googled what you said. So that's no, the first okay. thing that came up. Never mind. Never mind. It's all right. My bad. Thank you. Don't, okay. Don't, and and I guess good. this will be the last question from Nimitha. Can't see my question anymore, so in case it's gone, I've been waking up with Achilles pain in the morning, mm. which is quite new for me. I have very mobile ankles and have been running less than usual. Have you dealt with people with Achilles pain, Mark? Do you, you've dealt with Achilles pain stuff? What you got? 
I would say that if yeah, I mean, obviously the the context is like, what else are you doing with your training? But most specifically, you probably would be due for some calf work. Uh, ah, good. Specific. I mean, and you know, you got to think about the Achilles in some senses. Like that's the Achilles tendon is the same tissue that goes and wraps around the calcaneus, which is your heel, and becomes a plantar fascia. So I would look at the Achilles. The Achilles tends to typically happens like you've lost big toe extension, so your big toe has gotten weak, and you have lost big toe. You can't load that big toe through ninety degrees plus range of motion. Or your knee's not getting full uh, flexion. So both of those create the push and pull on the Achilles. And then, you know, working on uh, – I, I would say this too um, because I know that the suggestion just to do calf work is kind of like, you know, plain. It's like, oh, whatever. But there you can do – there's a difference between doing calf raises and actively feeling the calf contract. And I think that's a big thing that I'm realizing recently is like my left calf is – stronger it's you know you you want to flex your feet too you really have but like you have to you probably have to figure out and support yourself with the other foot to kind of take some weight off to really focus on the the contraction and that engagement because you can do calf raises and never know what a real calf contraction feels like so I'm excited to see what he says. But yeah, so I would say calf raises, but like <laughs> Sam broken. Did, did you read what he said? <laughs> yeah. Yo, this woman is not um <laughs> So in response to getting more iron, Sam said you literally <laughs> a good way to replenish the iron is just capsuling those period clumps and just eating them up. Not about, you, people drink their uh, urine these days. This is oh the thing. Oh my god, that's getting. Way I too saw popular. an Instagram thing where people were rubbing their which make. Yeah. I don't know. I'm. I'll stop talking. It doesn't make sense. It does uh, make no, sense, it but it doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have we have one quick last question from anabolic what, activities. Did you have? Oh, a, yeah, something on calf. Sorry. Go yeah, ahead. No, he would have a good answer. Oh, just again, I think. Uh, try to do some mild fascia release on the calves and your shins. I think that's, I think that's where all the pain comes from. Mm, it, and that's real. Like, I don't, I don't think people realize, especially if he says he's a runner, he, she, it, they, um, <laughs> if you do a lot of running, there is a lot of tissue that gets a lot of repetition, especially in that posterior tibialis behind, like just spending some time on that like that I, I think people underestimate both how poorly they have muscle control of the the muscles down there and both how much stiffness you can really play in with some of the soft tissue stuff it's like the inside of the shin calf area what's that called it would be your posterior tibialis um basically That's, i think fucked yeah. up on a lot of people yeah if you get in there and you just ooh. Oh gosh, that makes people cry with that. But it's, yeah, a lot it's of rough. gunky stuff in there. Mm-hmm. And when it does come to your calf work, you don't have to wait to start doing this at the gym. You know, first mm-hmm. off, if you have some stairs at home or mm-hmm. stairs in general, or like a fucking curb, um, you could go down and get some good extension of that Achilles. One thing to think about with calf work is. I like to sometimes do some bouncy, but for a lot of the calf work I do, I will pause at the bottom and then come up because Mm -hmm. like when you're, when you're doing calf work with your, uh, when you think about your Achilles, it's a springy tendon, right? And most people are bouncing during calf work, but you miss out on that muscle contraction. If you don't allow yourself to pause at the bottom where the Achilles is in like where where your calf is in that extended position. So pause at the bottom and then come up with you doing your calf work. Mm -hmm. And if you want to bounce on some of them, go ahead. But for a lot of your reps, you should probably go for a little longer. I think some people say too, for the Achilles specifically, uh, do some eccentric work for calves. So when you are doing this calf work, maybe just hang on to the eccentric a little bit more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking hell, Sam. All right. This, this is the last question from Anabolic Activities because Sam's being a troll in the chat. Um, Anabolic Activities, real question for Graham. What would you advise people to do to strengthen their body for the purpose of not getting injured and becoming unbreakable? That is quite the... Wow. Okay. Well, Graham, what do you think? That's a very broad question. Um, I, I think, I, I guess the only real way to answer this is I, I talk about a principle. Um, I think if you understand the principle of uh, like the, the major movers, I mean, you, you technically have bones, uh, bones, you know, your organs, bones, muscle, connective tissue, uh, I think would be the broad aspect. And organs function on like input, output, in a sense, like are you getting your nutrients? Bones are those are really like dehydrated areas. Like your, your bones form around lines of stress in a sense. So there's kind of a very long standing soft tissue. But, you know, if we think about injury, you know, there's a, there's acute injuries that happen and you get hit by a car or something like, you know, there, there is only so much. And maybe you can make the argument that by training uh, well, you can turn what would have been a, a devastating life altering injury into like just a, a road bump. 
but uh, specifically, I think most people when they go to injury is like, okay, the two things that can really play in in terms of my movement and training or my muscle and my connective tissue. Um, the thing I've had to really revisit recently after 14 years of pretty much going through the motions is you can do a lot of stuff. If you value position, meaning I'm going from point A to point B, and you don't think about the tension and the process of what happens as you go through that experience or you don't feel the muscle, and if you can't, <laughs> If you can't actually contract and feel the specific muscle fibers at different areas and and stay very engaged with your muscle, and if you need or if you need a lot of reactive stimulus, meaning I I don't know how to get my bicep unless someone like pulls down, I have to have weight in my hand to engage that. That's a sign that you probably have poor muscle connection. So first, getting the muscles that should be working, like the big muscles, your pecs, lats, uh, glutes, quads, calves, etc., like getting those engaged and treating your bodybuilding as like a really serious time to be focused. As opposed to just going through the motions, that's that'll take care of a lot of your overall movement pattern. And then the other side is a connective tissue. And so that scales two spectrums. One is getting uh, hydration to those tissues. So that's soft mm-hmm. tissue work, that's slow, long, viscoelastic, multidirectional, like fascial maneuvers or stretching uh, with an intention uh, to detail. Um, so that's like lengthening and stretching your body all the way out. And then the other end of that spectrum is the plyometric. So your connective tissue really works on those slow pressure, like very slow, long intentional movements. So it could be self myofascial release, long stretched out, like you know, hanging things like that that really pulls your body apart. That's stretching, like you could think about stretching a plastic bag apart, a viscoelastic property. Then you have to condition that. So that's the plyometrics. And so if you do the plyometrics, which are like repetitive, quick, rhythmic, like pop, all everything has to create tension. That trains and conditions. You like beat the leather up in a sense. You condition your tissue along lines of stress. So that that those two ends of the spectrum take care of connective tissue. The muscle engagement takes care of your overall movement. And those two things, I think, help you mitigate force and load and movement well that then help you navigate just stress so it doesn't end up on the passive tissues of your joints. And that's about it all. That's, that's the best you can do, I think. Mark, would you add any of that? Uh, well said. Yeah, just, I mean, th- some heavy lifting and some running mm-hmm. can make people uh, pretty resilient. But if you overdo them, they can leave you pretty busted up. Well, and if, you do, if you do heavy lifting on top of a foundation of like, these are my muscles, this is what I, I'm connected to that. And you do running on top of kinesh- tissue that is like resilient and healthy. So like adding in mm-hmm. what you do is the soft tissue work. That hits this like three-part triangle in a sense. Right. It's like you're getting a connective tissue with the running and the athletic plyometrics and add in some jumping and different movements as well, mm-hmm. like variation. And you can heavy lifting, which is stimulus on top of your system and training the muscles. That's your body. I think past that, you have to trust that your body has some wisdom and that your body will organize itself in the way that it, it, it has for thousands or millions of years. Because like mm-hmm. otherwise, you're left trying to like – make sure you have every single possible thing up to some arbitrary standard. And that's just overwhelming. All right. Got it. Cool guys. Okay. We're going to pick six winners today. Remember if you win today, please go on our discord of the power project. Find my name, Trent Seema message me your email address and your address. Okay. So we're going to give away some Vivo barefoot shoes. We're going to give away two hunker in stools. We're going to give away some supplements from within you. And we're going to give away one year supply of hostage tape. Mm. Okay. Oh Mark. Goodness. A lot of stuff. And if you don't win, you're not a winner. We don't do that here. Damn this, this chat, man. You're a loser. <laughs> I love you. The chat. They're roasting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped hiding porn. So now calves are his new shame. Oh, I love you. This is great. All right. First winner, Moose, M-O-O-S, Moose. If you don't message me, you ain't going to get your Vivo barefoot shoes. So join the Discord. Find me, Transima. The Discord's in the description. Uh, Send me your, just actually, yeah, send me your email address and username, okay? Second winner, Drew Eckhart. Drew Eckhart, you're going to win a hunkering stool again. What is a hunkering stool? Okay, hunker and stool. Let me describe that real quick before I give you the name that Mark just picked out. And uh, anabolic activities, you are not in for this giveaway. Just letting you know. It's this right here. It's a seat that you can, I love this thing because I sit on it when I get work done every single day, but it's low. So you kind of sit in a deep squat. You, uh, it just puts you in a great position. I get to like let my feet hang out and stuff. But I like the fact that it gets you bouncing. Mm -hmm. Like you're bouncing and moving around. So Give away two of those bitches today. Next winner is Sean Wanzer. Sean Wanzer. You're going to win some supplements from within you. Supplements. What if he pronounces it that way too. Wanzer. Sean Wanzer. <laughs> Sean Wanzer. Next winner is going to be 
JP503, you're going to win a pair of Vivo barefoot shoes. The next bucket pick is going to win a year's supply of hostage tape. Hmm. I wonder what a 503 stands for. 5 by 3 Area code? Could be May 3. Oh, hmm? gunpowder tea, please. Gunpowder tea, please. You win a year's supply of hostage tape. Again, directions. If I'll get the Discord, add me, email address, and address. So gunpowder tea. Please. And our last winner of the Sounds last like hunger in school. Gunpowder tea. Speaking of uh, <laughs> gunpowder, you guys want to be part of a, a gum a gum club? A gum club? Yeah. Gum yeah, what's this club? gum club? Yeah, I'll have to give me your addresses when we get off the air. Okay. Gum it's, of the month. Uh, uh, Ron Penna's gum club. Thinking, yeah. Build oh. a big build a big ass jaw. Oh, let's oh. fucking go. Connor Child Rose, you win a hunker in school. Mark, Sam asks if you can bring back This Is The Way Vanilla. Oh, we don't have any. Do you, do you guys, uh, oh, do you guys sell it still? I think so. Yeah, I thought oh, the okay. only one you stopped was Keto Pro, right? Oh, yeah, Keto Pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No more. <laughs> but I think we still have, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. All right, I'll, I'll check. So. Sam, if, if I'll bring you home some This Is The Way Vanilla if we have any, okay? okay. We'll find you some, Sam, don't worry. All right. You don't she's want to, an angry girl when she's hungry. Actually, that means she doesn't want any angry. chocolate. <laughs> he's, just, he's, just, he's, just, he's just asking about protein. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why she does not like chocolate. I figured oh. that would be her favorite flavor, but I guess not. <laughs> oh my God, Graham. You, I love you, bro. You're great. <laughs> she doesn't she just like chocolate? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was good. It was good. Oh man! I'm just saying, I like chocolate more than vanilla. <laughs> do you? Yeah, chocolate's the best flavor. Okay. I do like vanilla ice cream though. It's mm. less uh, less sweet. It's not as uh, vanilla ice cream just funny. just plain. I think vanilla icing ice cream gives you it, it's a better foundation for everything else. So if you have anything it's a that's really added good to call. it, yeah, like mm. you just start vanilla. And if you can enjoy vanilla ice cream, there's a lot in life you're happy with. Mm. If you need like Rocky Road to be happy, it's uh, like, I mean vanilla ice cream is really good. Like, yeah, it is. It's it, it's very good. I think we're room of guys who like vanilla. Am I not wrong? Okay, all right. I'm, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually I, just talking about the ice cream here. Like, uh, who who doesn't like vanilla ice cream? I mean, it's truly delicious. I think people they they do, but they need more. It's like those are people that are not happy in life. Yeah, I always want to put other stuff on it. You can mm-hmm. still put more other stuff on it, but if you can't be happy with vanilla. You ruin the vanilla flavor by putting too much other stuff on there. Like you can't taste it anymore. Mm. Mm. But some cookie dough makes it so much better. <laughs> right? Right, like three cookies away from being obese. Peanut butter cups. <laughs> oh, right? peanut butter cups. But but peanut butter cups in chocolate ice cream is better. But maybe cookie dough and vanilla is better because mm. then you have like if you have chocolate chips and then chocolate on top of it might be too much yeah, chocolate. Yeah, you can't tell the chocolate. Like, it's like, triple chocolate. Yeah, like, com- I, it was, you have me at one. They're combating each other. Why do kids always try to add hard candy? Because they don't know any better. Because their teeth haven't run in yet. Mine's yeah. too sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I can't chew that. They put, <laughs> gummy, they put like gummy worms in. A thing of ice cream. Oh, like, have you guys doing? never done that though? Gummy no, worms in the ice so. cream. It's actually so. I've done it in yogurt before. It's actually quite good. Well, that was when I was my early. Yeah, this is very good. Yeah. Then when you were blowing up. No, I, mean, I swear. I think my I early watching 20s. you watching yourself. You're like, damn. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just big. If you <laughs> if you take steroids and you stop taking steroids, what percentage of what you let's assume your training volume oh doesn't God. change, but uh-huh. like, what percentage do you keep? Why do you look at me when you ask this? question? <laughs> because I'm asking you a question. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> that is a Mark question. Well, you just know people though. Like, I'm just I saying know. you would know these questions. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not in SEMA. I really wouldn't know. Mark knows. Strength is never weakness. <laughs> weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye. <laughs> I'm interested. I would like to know the answer to the question. I just didn't think it had to be. <laughs> Getting big and jacked. That's what we just talked about. But how about improving your aerobic capacity? Part two with Chris Hinshaw. Check this mm. podcast out. You want to get a bigger engine? You want to improve your endurance drastically? This man, he knows all. Enjoy this podcast.